All praises to the most high God, all praises. So tonight's topic is called Monstrous Black Men. Monstrous Black Men. That's tonight's topic. Monstrous Black Men. Let's open up with the book of Isaiah chapter 3, verse 12. Isaiah 3, verse 12. The book of Isaiah, chapter 3, verse 12. Go ahead. As for my people, children are the oppressors, and women rule over them. Right. O my people, they which lead thee, cause thee to err, mm -hmm. and destroy the way of thy paths. Okay, read that verse again for me. Read that verse again for me. Isaiah, chapter 3, verse 12. Go ahead. As for my people, Stop children right are their oppressors. As for, as, as, as for my people. So the most High God is talking about his people, the children of Israel. Give me that in Matthew chapter 2, verse 6. Matthew chapter 2, verse 6. Matthew chapter 2, verse 6. Go ahead. And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the princes of Judah. Wait. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. So God's people is the Israelites. God's people is the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. The so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. So go back. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 12 again. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 12. Great. As for my people, children are their oppressors. Children are their oppressors. So God says in the nation of Israel, the children are oppressing the parents. That's what he's saying right there. The children are oppressing the parents in the nation of Israel. Go ahead. And women rule over them. And the reason why the children are oppressing the parents is because women rule over these kids. They are being raised by their mothers. This goes into single parent households. Read. Oh, my people, they which lead thee, oh, cause thee to err. Oh, children of Israel, you understand? He says, oh, my people, they which lead thee, the women that are leading you, they do what? Cause thee to err. They cause you to sin. They cause you to sin. You understand? Go ahead. And destroy the way of thy path. And destroy the, ways of, the way of thy path. You see that part right there when it says, Oh, my people, they which lead thee, meaning the women that lead you, they cause you to err. How? How do the women that are ruling over these men, these boys, how do they cause them to err? What is the error? You understand? Because that's the question we must ask. Now, give me the book of 2 Ezra. You understand? Give me 2 Ezra, chapter 14. Watch this. 2 Ezra, chapter 14, verse 14. Read that. Second Ezra chapter 14, verse 14. Great. Let go from thee mortal thoughts. He says, let go from you mortal thoughts. Talk about the men. Let go of your mortal thoughts, miserable thoughts. Go ahead. Cast away the burdens of man. Read. Put off now the weak nature. You see that thing? He says, put off now the weak nature. So now what Isaiah is talking about when he says, they all my people, they which lead thee, cause thee to err. What is the error? It being emotional. That's the error. The women that are raising these boys, you understand? They raise them up to be emotional. That's the error he's talking about. Read again, verse 14. Second Genesis chapter 14, verse 14. Go ahead. Let go from thee mortal thoughts. Mm -hmm. Cast away the burdens of man. Put off now the weak nature. Put off now the weak nature. What is the weak nature? Boys being raised by their mothers to be emotional. So they don't know how to deal with other men. They don't know how to respond to men because what? They have not experienced a male presence and the authority of a man in their life. So how do they deal with things? They deal with things the way women do, with emotions. You understand? Being weak. You understand that? That's what the, that's what the Isaiah is explaining here. Now watch this. Give me the book of I give me give me first Corinthians, okay? First Corinthians chapter 16. First Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13. Read that. First Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13. Come on. 
Watch ye. Stand fast in the faith. Mm -hmm. Quit you like men. Be strong. You see what I, you see what the apostle Paul he says? Watch ye. Stand fast in the faith. Quit you like men, meaning behave yourself like men. Why? Because women are raising the men now today. You understand? Single parent household, they are being ruled by mothers. By, they are being led by mothers in these households. That's why it says, quit you like men. Be strong. Be strong in the laws of the Most High God. Learn how to be a man according to God's commandments. That's why the Most High God is setting up camps all over the world. Why? So that when brothers come in who have not been raised by their fathers, it was only they were only being raised by their mothers. They can learn from men how to be men from the, by the word of the Lord. You understand? That's what he's saying right there. So go back to Isaiah chapter 3 verse 12 again. Isaiah chapter 3 verse 12. Go ahead. As for my people, they would, children are the oppressors. Read. And women rule over them. And women will rule over these, bo these boys. They're going to be raised up by their mothers. This is the effect of what happens when a boy has been raised by his mother. Read. Oh, my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err. They cause you to and be emotional. They cause you to be emotional. Go ahead. And destroy the way of thy path. And destroy the way of your path to manhood. They destroy that path for you to be a man. You understand? And because they what? They cause you to err. They raise you up to be emotional. This is what happens next. Second Ezra chapter 5, verse 8. Let's read that. Second Ezra chapter 5 and verse 8. Read that. Second Ezra chapter 5, verse 8. Go ahead. There shall be con a confusion also in many places. Mm -hmm. And the fire shall oft be sent out again. So the many places, guess what? It says there shall be a confusion also in many places. Wherever the children of Israel were scattered, there's confusion wherever we at. You understand? There's confusion in the black household. We don't know who's the man, who's the woman, because why? We're following the ways of Babylon, America, Europe. You understand? Western culture, we rejected God's commandments, which is where our culture is found. Read. And the fire shall oft be sent out again. Read. And the wild beasts shall change their places. Come on. And menstruous women shall bring forth monsters. You see that part right there? And menstruous women, unclean women, shall bring forth monsters. Because the monsters, the, these, these menstruous women will bring forth monstrous black men. They will raise up monstrous black men. That's what the Lord is teaching us here. You understand? Because of what broken family households. That's what the Lord is teaching us. Read that thing again, verse 8. Watch this. Second is chapter 5, verse 8. Come on. There shall be a confusion also in many places. Mm -hmm. And the fire shall be oft sent out again. Read. And the wild beasts shall change their places. The wild beasts. The wild beasts will change their places. I'm going to deal with that in a second. Come on. And menstruous women shall bring forth monsters. And menstruous women, unclean women, shall bring forth monsters. Now watch this. Let's deal with the beasts. It says, and the wild beasts shall change their places, and menstruous women shall bring forth monster, monsters. Guess what? These menstruous women, they raise up these boys to be monsters, to become thugs, to become homo thugs, to become killers. You understand? Why? Because they are emotional. They are filled with emotion. They are catching feelings all the time when you talk to them like men. And I see that in the camp too. Now watch this. You see that part right there and it says, and the wild beasts shall change their places. Watch this. Give me Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 3, verse 18. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 18. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 18. Go ahead. I said in my heart concerning mm. the estate of the sons of men. The estate that, of the sons of men. Come on. That God might manifest them mm -hmm. and that they might see that they themselves are beasts. You see what the Bible is saying? It says God will manifest the sons of men that they might see that they themselves are beasts. These are monsters. You understand? These sons of men, you understand? They're children of men because we are this. We come from men. So now the Lord is saying 
The Lord says, I'm going to manifest you that you can see that you are self, you are beast. You are behaving like beast now. You understand? Go back to 2 Ezra 5, verse 8. Read that again. 2 Ezra chapter 5, verse 8. Come on. There shall be a confusion also in many places. Mm -hmm. And the fire shall be offset out again. Read. And the wild beasts shall change their places. The wild beasts will change their places. So these menstruous women will bring forth monsters who have turned into beasts. They're behaving like beasts. Wild beasts. Go ahead. And menstruous women shall mm -hmm. bring forth monsters. And menstruous women will bring forth these monstrous evil black men. That's what the Lord is teaching us. This is the things that will happen in these last days. Jump up to verse 1. You know what? Read verse 2. Second Ezra 5 is 2. Read that. Second Ezra chapter 5 is 2. Go ahead. But iniquity shall be increased above that which thou now seest. Mm -hmm. Above that which now thou seest. Read. Or that thou hast heard long ago. You see what the Lord is telling us? It says iniquity is going to be increased above what you are seeing right now. It says sin is going to increase. What you're seeing right now, the Lord is saying there's nothing. You understand? Compared to the evil that you're going to see, that will happen upon this earth. He says the evil that you're seeing right now is nothing compared to what's coming. That's what the Lord is telling us. He says that which thou now seest or that thou hast long, that was had long ago. Meaning the ill that happened from the time of Genesis, guess what? And the evil that's happening now is, guess what? The one that's happening now beats the one that happened back then. But he said what you are seeing right now is nothing compared to what's coming. That's what the Lord is teaching us. You understand? In context of what we're reading, you're going to see that thing this day. Watch this. Give me the book of Lamentations 4, verse 3. Lamentations, chapter 4, verse 3. Lamentations, you're going to see chapter that this day. Read that. Come on. Lamentations, chapter 4, verse 3. Read. Even the sea monsters draw out the breast. Mm -hmm. They give suck to their young ones. Go ahead. The daughter of my people is become cruel. Come on. Like the ostriches in the wilderness. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, even the sea monster, the sea monsters draw out the breast. They give suck to their young ones. Remember what we read in Ecclesiastes. He says, you will manifest the son of the sons of men that guess what? They're going to see that they themselves are beasts behaving like wild beasts. Because it says the sea monsters, they know what they're supposed to be doing. They give suck to their young ones. But it says the daughters of my people have become, is, is what? It says, but the, it says the daughter of my people is become cruel, like the ostriches in the wilderness. Meaning the black woman has become cruel, like an ostrich in the wilderness. So in the wilderness, that's a wild beast. You see that thing? It says, but the daughter of my people is become cruel. This is talking about the black women that are raising these monstrous black men. You understand? Go ahead. The tongue of the sucking child cleaveth to the roof of his mouth for thirst. You see that thing? The tongue of the sucking child cleaveth to the roof of his, of his mouth for thirst. The child is thirsty because what do they need? They need nurture. How do you nurture them? You nurture them according to the laws of God. That's not what's going on today in single parent households when the women are running the show. You understand? Go ahead. The young children are spread, mm -hmm. and no man breaketh it unto them. You see that part right there? It says, no man, no man, no man, because there's no father in the house. You understand? There is no father in the house. It says, the young children are spread, and no man breaketh it unto them, because the father is not in the household. You, you see that thing? That's what the Lord is teaching us. This is what would happen to us in the last days. You understand? Go back to second Esther. Because why? These women, these, these households are being led by women and they cannot raise boys. Women cannot raise boys. You understand? There needs to be a father in, 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 around to do what? To make sure that these boys, they grow up to be men. Because the father instills the authority in the child. You see that thing right there? So now because there, there's no men in the house, these are the results of it. That's why now the Lord is waking us up men to set the nation in order. And the black women don't like that thing because they are talking about a hey, patriarchy, this patriarchy. I'm going to deal with that thing. 
this day. Go back to Second Ezra, okay, chapter five. Second Ezra five and verse eight again. Second Ezra chapter five verse eight. Mm -hmm. There shall be a confusion also in many places, and the fire shall be off sent out again, and the wild beasts shall change their places. Go and ahead. menstruous women shall bring forth monsters. You see that thing? And menstruous women will bring forth these monstrous black, evil black men. Watch this. Now, because of that, because remember it says no man breaketh it forth. Because there was no man in the house. You understand that? Watch this. Now, I'm going to share my screen real quick. So you can see because this word has been passed around in the media for a while now. Okay. Watch this. Hmm. Now, read the definition. The definition, the definition of patriarchy. Go ahead. The definition of patriarchy. Noun. A system of society or government in which the father or eldest male is head of the family and descent is reckoned through the male line. You see what, you see that thing? This is how the world is set up by the most High God. You understand? It says a system of society or government in which the father or the or eldest male is the head of the family and descent is reckoned through the male line. That's biblical right here. Watch this. Give me Genesis 18 verse 18. Okay, give me Genesis chapter. You know what? Give me 1 Corinthians 11 verse 3. Then I'm going to give an example in Genesis 18. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 3. First Corinthians. The black women today, hold on. The black women today, I see this word being passed around. Patriarchy, patriarchy. Patriarchy is what? Is how the Lord set up the whole earth. And that's how he set up our nation. The so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. That's how we build our nation up. The men being the leader, the women supporting the men. You understand? And the men teaching the wife to teach the children. That's how we build a nation. You understand? First Corinthians 11 verse 3. Because they make it seem like patriarchy is a bad thing. No, patriarchy is biblical. Understand that? Read that. First Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3. Go ahead. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. The head of the black man is Jesus Christ. Go ahead. And the head of the woman is the man. You start patriarchy right there. The hair of the woman is the man, patriarchy. The hair of the woman is the man, that's patriarchy. And who set this up? The most like God. So you men should not be afraid to teach this thing because the black woman is going to come with no patriarchy. These are called trigger words. For you not to teach what the best Bible is saying, we must teach it with all boldness and authority without fear. No fear, no favor. Read that thing again, verse 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. Go ahead. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Come on. And the head of the woman is the man. Mm -hmm. And the head of Christ is God. That's the order. This is God's divine order. The Lord set this up. Now give me Genesis 18, verse 18. About our forefather Abraham. Watch this. Genesis chapter 18, verse 18. Genesis chapter 18, verse 18. Read. Seeing that Abraham, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation. Read. And all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. All the nations of the earth will be blessed in Abraham. It's talk about Isaac and Jacob and Jacob's seed, which is the 12 tribes. Go ahead. For I know him, mm -hmm. that he will command his children he will and his him. household that he will command his children. You see what the Bible is saying? The most High God says, I know him. Who? Abraham. He says he knows Abraham, that Abraham will command his children. That's patriarchy. You understand? That's patriarchy. Abraham was an alpha male. Understand that? Read. That he will command his children and his household after him. That includes his wife and the servants that worked for Abraham. He set his house in order. This is an example of our forefather that we must follow as in our journey of repentance, building the 12 tribes of Israel. You understand? Read it again, verse 19. Genesis chapter 18, verse 19. Go ahead. For I know him, that he will command his children 
and his household after him. Read. And they shall keep the way of the Lord. You see that to do, they Hold on. They shall what? And they shall keep the way of the Lord. Remember what we read in Isaiah 3. Go back to Isaiah 3 verse 12. We coming back here. It says, they shall keep the way of the Lord. They shall keep the way of the Lord. Watch what we read in Isaiah 3 verse 12. When it's run by a woman. When it's a matriarchy. Okay, watch this. Isaiah 3 verse 12. Isaiah chapter 3 verse 12. Read. As for my people, children are their princes, and women rule over them. Go ahead. O oh, my people, they which lead thee, cause thee to err, mm -hmm. and destroy the way of thy paths. You see what the Bible is saying? You see when women are in power, when women are leading the charge, it says, O oh, my people, they which lead thee, cause thee to err. They cause you to sin, to be emotional, to be weak, to be a wimp, to be a simp. Okay? It says, and destroy the way of thy path. But look at how when, 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 when it's a matriarchy, guess what? The men, they, be, they, they, they are raised up to be monsters, you understand? And the way of be, their, their way to become men is destroyed because they are being taught the wrong way. Not according to the scriptures on how to be men. You understand? Now, watch what happens when a man is in the front according to how the Lord has set it up. Go back to Genesis 18 now. Read verse 19 again. Genesis chapter 18, verse 19. Go ahead. For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him. Mm -hmm. And they shall keep the way of the Lord. Stop right there. They shall keep the way of the Lord. Remember what we read in Isaiah. It says, they which lead thee cause thee to err and destroy the way of thy path. So the way of becoming the, the path to manhood gets destroyed by when the woman is raising the man, which she cannot. You understand? So is that they will destroy their, your path to manhood. But when a man is ruling, when a man is the lead, the head of the house, the Bible says they shall keep the way of the Lord because the man is going to pick up this Bible. The, the spiritual man will pick up this Bible and set his house in order and understand, okay, I've got my own shortcomings. Let me examine myself, get myself right. Then I'll teach my children so that they follow after my example. You understand? That's why it says, and they shall keep the way of the Lord. They're not going to destroy the way of their path. Right? To do justice and judgment. To do justice and judgment. Stop right there. Hold this. Give me the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 1. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 1. Let's read that. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 1. Go ahead. Oh God of my fathers, mm -hmm. and Lord of mercy, who has read. made all things with thy word. Who has made all things with thy word, right? God, it, says, it says, oh God of my fathers. One of the fathers that we're talking about now is our forefather Abraham. Go ahead. An ordained man through thy wisdom. You see that thing? Our forefather Abraham was ordained through God's wisdom to know to what to lead his house, to command his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord, to do justice and judgment. Read. That he should have dominion over the creatures which thou hast made. You see that thing? To be a leader. To be an alpha male. Because that's biblical. Right? And order the world according to equity and righteousness. You see that thing? He will order the world according to equity and righteousness. Right? And execute judgment with an upright heart. Because he keeps the commandments and the Lord ordained him through his wisdom. That's why it says, I know him. Go back to Genesis 18 verse 19. Again. Genesis chapter 18, verse 19. Read. For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him. Mm -hmm. And they shall keep the way of the Lord Read. to do justice Read. and judgment. That the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he had spoken of him. You see that thing? Meaning what? He, they prom he promised Abraham that he will have a child, which is Isaac. But the key is, they are, our forefather Abraham... He was an alpha male. And patriarchy is biblical. You understand? Because today with this feminist movement, crap is the reason why the black household is so destroyed because black women don't want to be held accountable. 
You understand? They don't want to be held accountable. We will hold them accountable. The black man is being held accountable ever since we got here, ever since we were colonized, ever since we came running here after 70 AD. The black man has been getting it. The black woman has been at ease. That's why when you hold her accountable, she's surprised she's mad. She say, oh, I'm abused. You understand that? So, but we're not going to move like that. We're going to teach the scriptures as it is written to build our nation up. Patriarchy is biblical and we will teach that. Understand that thing. Now watch this. Go back to Isaiah 3 verse 12. Isaiah chapter 3 verse 12. As for my people, children are their oppressors mm -hmm. and women rule over them. O oh, my people, they which lead thee, cause thee to err, and destroy the way of thy paths. Now watch this. It says, they which lead thee, cause thee to err, and destroy the way of thy path. Now watch this. Read this definition now. Matriarchy. Okay? Matriarchy. The definition of matriarchy. Now. Read. A system of society or government ruled by a woman or women. That's what's going on today. That's what the feminist movement is about. You understand? That's what um, this a toxic masculinity is about because they hate patriarchy. You understand that thing? They hate, they hate the order that the Lord has set up. Men in the front, women supposed to support and follow. And this only affects our nation because the other nations don't have that problem. We are the only ones that have that problem because why? The white man has, uh, the white woman Rather, the black woman has is what has joined the feminist movement to support the white woman that had a problem with her with, with her white man. The black woman joined that thing that has nothing to do with it. You understand? Now she's left to the cold and she's given what she's given and she's given uh, something to hold on to. Be independent, but you are still dependent on the black on 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 the white man. Although you are saying you are independent, but they are still depend on the white man. You understand? But they are just independent from their black men, the men that they were created out of. So our job is to use the laws of the Most High God to set our nation back together as the Most High God has commanded us. You understand? Read that part again, the definition. The definition of matriarchy. A system of society or government ruled by a woman or women you see that thing? A system of society or government ruled by a woman or women. That's what's going on today. Watch this. Give me Jeremiah 31 verse 22. Okay? Because matriarchy is the is the, 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 the system of matriarchy is what Isaiah is explaining here. You understand? It says, they which lead thee, cause thee to err and destroy the way of their paths. When we are, when we are living in a matri matriarchal system, when we are li living in a matriarchy, these are the results of matriarchy right there. Isaiah 3 verse 12. Isaiah prophesied about this thing. Okay, read that. Jeremiah 31 verse 22. Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 22. Go ahead. How long wilt thou go about, O thou backsliding daughter? Mm -hmm. For the Lord hath created a new thing in the earth. Read. A woman shall compass a man. Matriarchy. Matriarchy is a new thing in the earth. It's not what the Lord set up. It's what... Satan, the devil, which is the white man, he's the one that set that thing up from the time of the in the garden unto this day. You understand? Read that again, verse 22. Jeremiah 31, verse 22. Read. How long wilt thou go about, O thou backsliding daughter? Mm -hmm. For the Lord hath created a new thing in the earth. Read. A woman shall compass a man. A woman shall compass a man. That's matriarchy right there. That's the new thing in the earth. That goes against every, all the scriptures that we went over. It goes against that. But it goes with what Isaiah said and it goes with what Jeremiah is saying right here. You understand? So go back to Isaiah 3 verse 12. Isaiah chapter 3 verse 12. Isaiah chapter 3 verse 12. Read. Right? As for my people, children are their oppressors. Mm -hmm. And women rule over them. And women oh, rule my over people. them. Come on. Oh, my people, they which lead thee, cause thee to err, mm -hmm. and destroy the way of thy paths. 
and destroy the way of their past. So what we're going over here is what? Is the effects of what? Of a, of a system or is, a, is, a, is the effects of a, a matriarchy. You understand? That monstrous, monst monstrous women will bring forth monstrous evil black men. And that's my focus this day. You understand? The product of these menstruous women raising up these boys because they are the ones that what they rob, they steal, they murder, they cheat. You understand? They do all manner of evil upon this earth. And this is what? These are monstrous, black, evil black men. I'm going to deal with them. You understand? But I'm showing you the result of it. The, 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 the root cause. You understand? The root cause of it is because of what? Women are running the houses by themselves. The black man is not there. And when you investigate, the black man has been kicked out because he's no good and so on and so forth. You understand? No problem. But the most High God is raising the black man up this day. You understand? He's holding us accountable. That's why the black family is destroyed because the man is not there. The head of the family, which is us. But the Lord is giving us this Bible and we are taking responsibility to get our minds right. Guess what? When we do that, we also going to set the nation of Israel up. That includes the women and the children. But today is not the women. I'm dealing with the men today. Watch this. Give me the book of Ecclesiasticus, okay? Sirach 36, Sirach 36, verse 25. Read what you got. Sirach 36, verse 25. It's going to take a very interesting twist to it. Watch this. Sirach 36, verse 25. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 36, verse 25. Go ahead. Where no hedge is, mm -hmm. there the possession is spoiled. You see that part right there? Where no hedge is, there the possession is spoiled. Who's the possession? Our sisters. Go ahead. And he that hath no wife will wander up and down mourning. So now the key we want out of that verse is says, where no hedge is, a hedge is a leader. You understand? Where there's no protection, it says the possession is spoiled. How is the possession going to be spoiled? Because the sisters now, they are vulnerable because they, they don't have what? They don't have that male presence in their life. Their father, their big brother to tell them what to do, what not to do, to protect and nature. You understand that? That's the role of the man, to protect, to provide. You understand? To teach, to guide, to instill authority and so forth. That's the role of the black man. If the black man is not there, guess what? The, our sisters, they become spoiled. And guess what? They don't know what to look for when it comes to these evil, monstrous black men. They don't know what to look for. They cannot identify these monstrous, evil black men. They don't know how to identify them. But today is your day. We're going to identify them this day in the spirit of Christ. Okay? Read that thing again. Ecclesiastes chapter 36, verse 25. Go ahead. Where no hedges, there mm -hmm. the position is spoiled. Stop right there. And Where no hedges, there the position is spoiled. Guess what? Give me that in Sirach 28 verse 24. Their position is our sisters, which must be what? Which must be protected. We must protect our sisters. Because there's a lot of evil that is happening in South Africa when it comes to our black women. We love them. We must protect them, but we use the laws of the Most High God to do so. Watch this. Sirach 28 verse 24. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 28, verse 24. Come on. Look, that thou hid thy position about with thorns. Read. Really? And bind up thy silver and gold. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, look that thou hedge thy possession about with thorns. That's why it says, where no hedge is there, the possession is spoiled. So our job as black men that know this Bible is to do what? Is to hedge our possession with thorns. The thorns here represents the word of the Most High God. To protect our sisters by teaching them and educating them about the scriptures so that what they understand, they know what to look for. There's red, the red flags in these monsters, monsters, evil black men. Watch this. Because remember, I'm dealing with the evil black, the evil black men, these monstrous evil black men that are being raised by their mothers. But I'm showing you now, the twist is now the sisters now, they need to be able to identify these monstrous evil black men. You understand? In all ages. Now watch this. Read again. Verse 24. Ecclesiastes chapter 28, verse 24. Go ahead. Look that thou hedge thy possession about with thorns. Mm -hmm. 
And bind up thy silver and gold. And bind up thy silver and gold. Now go, give me this rag 36 now. Verse 21. Okay, sisters, pay close attention. Okay, Sirach 36, verse 21, come on. Ecclesiastes 36, verse 21. Read. A, a woman will receive every man, yet is one daughter better than another. You see what the Bible is saying? It says a woman will receive every man. Where there is no hedge, a woman will receive every man. That's why you see these sisters today, they are abused. You understand? They are abused. They are used. They are spoiled by these monstrous, evil black men. Why? Because they receive every man into their life. Why? Because they have no fathers in their, in their, in their lives to teach them about men. You understand that? Read that again. Ecclesiastes chapter 36, verse 21. Mm -hmm. A woman will receive every man, yet is one daughter better than another. That one daughter that is better than that woman that received every man is because this one, she got a hedge over her to teach them about men because men know men. You understand? Women don't know men. You'll only learn, uh, you'll only learn about what a man is like from a man as a sister. You understand? So that's why he says, and the first man to teach is your father. Now watch this. It says, a woman will receive every man. Now watch this. Give me the book of Ecclesiastes 11, verse 29. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 29. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 29. Read. Bring not every man into thine house. Don't bring every man into thy house. You sisters, you just bring every man into your house. You bring every, you invite every brother to your life. That's the reason why today this baby mama dramas, baby daddy dramas, why? Because you receive every man into your house. You understand? You receive every man into your house. The Lord is telling you, says, bring not every man into thine house. Go ahead. For the deceitful man hath many trains. For the deceitful man has many tricks. You understand? The deceitful man has many tricks. So the Lord is teaching you, sisters, you must be diligent and vigilant. How you do that? You must have a hedge over you. You understand? To identify these monstrous, evil black men. Because it says, for the deceitful men have many tricks. You understand? So that the, the Lord is saying, you must do your research. Now watch this. Give me, give me Sirach 6 verse 7. You must prove a friend. Okay? You must prove a friend. Read that. Sirach 6 and 7. Ecclesiastes chapter 6 verse 7. Read. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove Mom, him first. You must what? Prove him first. The Bible says, this is the most I God speak. He says, you better prove that man first. Receive not every man into your house. You don't know what type of monster you're going to receive into your house. Remember what we read in 2nd Ezra. It says, and menstruous women will bring forth monsters. These are beasts, wild beasts. They behave like that. So how are you going to know if you don't prove the brother? If you don't prove to see if he's a nick? If you don't know, if you don't, think, if you don't investigate what type of spirit he is? The law says you must prove him. Read again. Ecclesiastes chapter 6 verse 7. Mm -hmm. If thou wouldest get a friend, Read. prove him first. Mm -hmm. And be not hasty to credit him. Do you see what the Bible is saying? Don't be hasty. Don't be chacharach to prove him. It says, be not hasty to credit him. Watch this. This is how you prove him. Give me that in First John 4 verse 1. Okay. You must not prove him by the standard that you, the standard that, that you used to use in the world before you came into this truth. Because if you go by that measuring tape, guess what's going to happen? You'll always fail the test. You'll always attract that evil Negro, you understand? That monstrous evil black Negro, egg, black Asian Negro that you always attracted in the world. Watch this. First John 4 verse 1. Read that. First John chapter 4 verse 1. Come on. Beloved. Believe not every spirit. Don't believe every spirit, meaning don't be hasty to credit them. That's what the Lord is telling you right there. He's repeating the same thing. Go ahead. But try the spirits. But whether. What? Hold on. But, but what? try the spirits. But try the spirits. 
but try because when you are putting when, when you are trying something that means you are scrutinizing it you are investigating it you are testing it you want to know what type, what is what, what 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 it's made of that's why the lord says but try the spirit you understand you must try the spirit watch this give me the book of sirach 2 okay ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 5 read that Ecclesiastes 2 verse 5. Read. For gold is tried in the fire. For gold is tried in the fire. It is because we are already the gold. The key is you need to be melted so the impurities can be taken out of your spirit. Read that thing again. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 5. Read. For gold Read. is tried in the fire. Mm -hmm. And acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. You see that part right there? An acceptable man in the furnace of adversity. So guess what? He has to go through the fire. What is the fire? The spirit of the Lord is the fire. Go back to 1 John 4 verse 1 again. 1 John chapter 4 verse 1. Mm -hmm. Beloved, believe not every spirit. Believe not every spirit. But try the spirits. But try the, the what? Hold on. But what? But try the spirits. But try the spirit. That but try the spirit with what? The word of the most high God. Not by your standard, but the standard that the Lord has set up. That's how you try the spirit. Read. But try the spirits, whether they are of God. Whether they are of God. Whether they're rolling in the, the, the spirit of the most high God. Whether their spirit is in line with what is written in this Bible. Read. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. You see that thing? Every, every brother now has a Bible. You understand? They think they can give you a breakdown. You just be laughing. You simple as hell. That's why you're supposed to open the scriptures to see whether those things are true. And in order for you to try the spirit, you must know the scriptures. You must have a hedge over you to teach you the scriptures, whether it be the leadership in the camp or whether, whether it be your, your husband or your father, your brother that knows the scripts. You understand that? But you must have a hedge. Okay, that's what the Lord is saying, what he's saying right there. Go back to Sirach 6, verse 7 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 7. Read. If thou wouldest get a friend, mm -hmm. prove him first, and be not hasty to credit him. And be not hasty to credit him. Because a lot of the sisters, you are too quick to credit a brother. Why? I'll tell you the reason why you do that. Give me First John 2, verse 16. This is one of the main reasons why sisters be too quick to credit a Negro. You understand? They don't try him. They don't test him. They don't prove him like the scripture says to do. They don't follow the process. Watch this. First John 2, verse uh, 16. First John chapter 2, verse 16. Go ahead. For all that is in the world, mm -hmm. the lust of the flesh, that's the first thing right there. The lust of the flesh. The reason why sisters don't prove a Negro, you understand? They don't prove whether he's a monster, whether he's a beast, or he's a righteous brother in the truth that loves the Lord. Guess what? It's because the reason why they skip those steps is because of lust of the flesh. They are horny, they are burning. You understand? Read. The lust of the flesh and mm. the lust of the eyes. The lust of the eyes. Because of the lust of your eyes, you understand? Read. And the pride of life. And the pride of life, come on. Is not of the Father, but mm -hmm. is of the world. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, that's not of the Father. That's of the world. The world teaches you to go after the lust of the flesh. The world teaches you to go after the lust of your eyes. The world teaches you to what? To have the pride of life which is going against the laws of the most High God. That's what the world teaches. But when you're rolling with this Bible, you're not going to move in that spirit. You're going to what? You're going to do your due diligence. Watch this. Give me Sirach 11 verse 2. Ecclesiasticus chapter 11 verse 2. Ecclesiasticus chapter 11 verse 2. Read. Commit not a man for his beauty. You see what the Bible is Neither saying? Neither above Hold on. Commend not a man for his beauty. Because guess what? Beauty, you have to see. That's the lust of the eyes. 
If you're only, if you have lust, lust is driving you, guess what? You're going to commend him for what he looks like, how he looks. I'm not saying you must ignore that because that's the first thing you see. But the, the Lord is telling you, said, okay, that's the first thing you see. But now you need to go deeper to now you start to prove the brother. You understand? Read. Neither abhor a man for his outward appearance. He says, don't hate a man for his outward appearance. Because, you know, he's not my type and all of that. But your type, what standard are you using to, ch to choose your type? Are you using the standard that you used to use in the world, which is not of the Father? Or are you going to use the standard that the Most High God has set up, which will teach you not to commend a man for his outward appearance, for his beauty, nor hate him for his outward appearance? But guess what? Because you're trying the spirit. You see that thing? Because you're trying the spirit. And it takes time to do that thing. It takes patience to do that. You understand? It will take different um, scenarios to see how they behave. Then you'll know what type of spirit they are rolling in. You understand? Because the reason why sisters don't want to do that is because, guess what? They are hasty to credit. Give me Sarah 27. Okay. You know what? Give me Sarah 19 verse 4. Sarah chapter 19 verse 4. Ecclesiastes chapter 19, verse 4. Read. He that is hasty to give credit is light-minded. Mm -hmm. You see what the Bible is saying? If you are hasty, if you are quick, you are too chacharach to give credit, the law says you're stupid. Because how else are you going to find out if this guy is a monster or not? If he's a beast? How are you going to know? The Lord is saying, don't be hasty to give credit. Because if you do, that means you're not proving, you're not... You are not following the process that the Lord has set up. The standard that the Most High God has put up. So it says, he that is hasty to give credit is light-minded. That means you're stupid. The Lord says you are sottish, you dumb. Don't be doing that. Okay, come on. And he that sinneth shall offend against his own soul. What is the sin? Being hasty to give credit. You're going to sin against your own soul. You will destroy your own self. You're going to get yourself killed. You're going to find a man that is a monster that will abuse you, use you, and drop you like a hot potato or put you to death. Watch this. Sarah 27 verse 5. So one of the things that you must prove is what? You must, you must prove his speech. The things that come out of his mouth because what's coming out of his mouth, his mouth is what's in his mind. That's what the Lord is trying to teach us. Watch this. Sarah 27 verse 5. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 27 verse 5. Read. The furnace proveth the potter's vessels. Mm -hmm. So the trial of man is in his reasoning. You see what the Bible is saying? So the trial of man is in his reasoning. Because guess what? If there's a problem, right? And he's going back and forth with you, but there's no scriptures that are being pulled. Guess what? That's not the man of the Lord. Because it says, so, so the trial of man is in his reasoning. Give me that in Romans 2. Okay. You know what? Give me Acts 17. I think that's what I want. Acts 17. Acts chapter 17 and verse 2. Read that. Acts chapter 17 verse 2. Read. And Paul, as his man was, Mm -hmm. Went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reason with them out of the scriptures. You see what you see what the men of the Lord does? They reason out of the scriptures. They don't use their own mind. They don't use their own emotions, their own thoughts. Because guess what? Now emotions now are running the show. You understand? Because you have not proved that this brother is a, actually is a monster. Is a is a evil Negro. He's a monster. Because he deals with emotions, not with the word of the Most High God. He does not reason with you out of the scriptures. So that means he's not going to be able to teach you the scriptures. He's not well-versed in the scriptures enough to teach you. He's not mature in the word of the Lord. But because you see, you, you see he's, he's, he's tall, he's got, he's got, he's got big-sized shoes. That's what you look for. You understand? The only interested in, you want, to be, you want him to sex you. That's all you care about. You overlook all the red flags. You understand? Go back to where was that? Sirach 27, verse 5. 
Ecclesiastes chapter 27 verse 5. Read. The furnace proved the potter's vessels. Mm -hmm. So the child of man is in his reasoning. So the trial of man is in his reasoning. The trial of man is in his... How, how, how you, do you try him? You try him to see how he reasons. How must he reason? He reason with, he must reason with you out of the scriptures. He must not be reasoning out of his own mind. He must use the word of the Most High God to deal with you scripturally. You understand? The Bible is the playing field. So that's how you must... What, that's how you prove the brother. You understand? To see whether he's a monster or he's not. Okay, Ray. The fruit declareth if the tree have been dressed. Mm -hmm. So is the utterance of a conceit in the heart of man. In the mind of man. So is the utterance, utterance, their reasoning of a conceit in the mind of man. You understand? The same way the fruit will tell you whether the tree was taken care of, so is the utterance, meaning the reasoning of man. Guess what? In the, in the reasoning of a conceit in the heart of man. That's what the Lord is telling you. So he must reason with you out of the scriptures. Because he, imagine you are going for hours and hours just going back and forth because now emotions are running the show. The scriptures is not brought once or none of that. Guess what? That's not the man of the Lord. That's not the man of the Lord. That's a mama's boy. That's an emotional brother. That's a monster. You understand? That is a monster right there. Now watch this. Give me, keep going. You know what? Keep, keep going. Read verse 7. Verse 7. Mm -hmm. Praise no man before thou hearest him speak. You see that thing? Don't praise no man before you hear them speak. Because their, their speaking goes back to the utterance, goes back to the reasoning in verse 5 and 6. Because they must speak according to the scriptures as it is written. Their conversation must be based on what is written in this Bible. Every scenario that comes up, he must use the scriptures to reason with you. Right? For this is the trial of man. You see that part right there? That's the trial of man right there. That is trial. That's why it says, if thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first. Because that is trial. How do you prove him? You prove him by the spirit. Sirach 37 verse 12. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 37 verse 12. Read. But be continually with the godly man. How are you going to be continually? The... Hold on. It says, but be continually, meaning not sometimes, not knowing you feel like it, no, always, continually. But be continually with the godly man. Remember, one of the tests, when one of the one of the tests that you must conduct is what? You must prove his reasoning. Does he reason with you out of the scriptures? Or does he reason with you out of his own wicked mind? So you are proving his reasoning if he's out of the laws of the Most High God or he's out of his lust. Read that again, verse 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 37, verse 12. Read. But be continually with a godly man mm -hmm. whom thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord. Whom thou knowest. So in order for you to know whether he keeps the commandments of the Lord or not, is that your conversation must be about what? Give me Philippians 127. Okay. You know what? Stay in Sirach. Sirach 9. Okay. Let's stay in Sirach. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 15. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 15. Go ahead. Let thy talk be with the wise. Mm -hmm. And all thy communication. In the law of the Most High. No, some of your communication must be in the law. And all the communication in the law of the Most High. You see that part right there? And all, and all, and all the communication in the law of the Most High God. That remember it says this is that before, this is the trial of man. The only way you're going to be able to try this man, you need to see if all his communication is in the law of the Most High God. If his communication is not in the law of the Most High God, that's the, not the man of the Lord. That's a monster. That's a beast right there. That's a monster because he must be in the laws of the Most High God because you are in the law of the Most High God. Your communication must be about that. You understand? Because when even when you grow older, give me Tobit 8 verse 7. You understand? Tobit 8 verse 7. Watch this. 
Tobit chapter 8, verse 7. Go ahead. And now, O Lord, mm. I take not this, my sister, for last. Really? But I brightly, therefore, mercifully ordain that we may become heirs together. You see, you see that part right there? It says, I take not this, my sister, for last. Because if you take it for last, that last is going to run out. Now you're going to want some new P-U-S-S-Y. You understand? Then you're going to drop the sister like a hot potato. So now it says, um, it says, I take not this, my sister, for last, but uprightly. Therefore, mercifully ordain that we may become aged together. When you are aged, when you are in your old age, all you have left is what? Conversation. You understand? So that's the most important thing. Yes, you're going to see the outward appearance, but guess what? Because you might see some a brother, you know, he's look, good looking on the outside, but when you talk to him, he's not about the laws of the most High God. He's not about that. On the inside, he's ugly. His spirit is ugly. You understand? So how are you going to know that? You must use the scriptures to prove whether he's about this Bible or not. You understand? When they open their mouth, it's like, mm, I wish they did not. You understand? But the only way for you to figure that out, you have to make sure that you know that he keeps the laws of the Mosa. Go back to Sirach 37 verse 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 37 verse 12. Come on. But be continually with the godly man mm. whom thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord Read. and will sorrow with thee if thou shalt miscarry. Well, come on. You're and okay? let the okay. counsel... Okay. No, no, that's it, that's it. It says, and whose mind is according to thy mind. Read that part again. Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 37 verse 12. Read. But be continually with the godly man mm -hmm. whom thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord whose mind is according to thy mind. Stop right there. I agree your, your mind, your mind is, a, is about the laws of God. His mind also must be about the laws of the Most High God because that's what brings you together. Sarah 25 and 1. Because this is what you agree on. You understand? You agree with what the Bible is saying. He agrees on what the Bible is saying. Now you have a common denominator, the laws of the Most High God. Therefore, both your communication will be in the law of the Most High God. Read that. Sarah 25 and 1. Ecclesiastes 25 verse 1. Read. In three things I was beautified mm -hmm. and stood up beautiful both before God and men. Come on. The unity of brethren. Mm. The love of neighbors. Go ahead. A man and a wife that agree together. You see that's the key right there. A man and a wife that agree together. So the first agreement that you must have is what? The laws of the Most High God. So therefore, when you are proving the brother... His all his communication must be in the law of the Most High God. You understand? Because that's your, that's, your, that's your safety net. That's your playing field. The laws of the Most High. In order for that to happen, you cannot be a lazy sister. You must study. You understand? You must study and apply, seek counsel. So you are always on top of your game when it comes to this book. You understand? Because this is a matter of life and death. So now it says a man and a wife that agree together. The thing that is going to make you to be in agreement to speak the same thing is the laws of God. Because your communication as you are trying him, his reasoning is out of the scriptures. Like we read in Acts 17 verse 2. You understand? You must test what is coming out of his mouth. You understand? Watch this. Now, the next thing that you do, give me Tobit 5 verse 12. Tobit chapter 5 verse 12. Tobit chapter 5 verse 12. Mm -hmm. Then he said, I am Azarias, the son of Ananias the Great, Ray. and of thy brethren. Come on. Then Tobit said, Thou art welcome, brother. Be not now angry with me, because I have inquired to know thy tribe and thy family. Stop right there. You see what he's saying? He says, Be not angry with me. What is Tobit saying right here? Because some brothers, they will tend to be angry when you ask them about their past. When you ask them about their family, because you are trying to figure out what type of family you come from. You're trying to figure that out. You are investigating what? 
because you need to know if he's not coming out of a family of nutcases. You understand? They are not crazy. You're trying to figure that out. So that's why he says, be not now angry with me because I have inquired to know thy tribe and thy family, the stock you come from. Read. For thou art my brother mm -hmm. of an honest and good stock. You see that thing right there? You are inquiring to figure out whether this man, he comes from an honest and good stock. You are trying to figure that out. Why? Because that's very important to find out. You understand? If he's not coming from a family that has a history of abuse, you understand? A history of murderers, a history of thieves and so forth. You need to investigate that. A history of rapists. How do you know? You see, don't be naive, okay? Read. For I, for I know Ananias and Jonathan. I know Ananias and I know Jonathan. So he's naming the people that he knows that are connected to him. Read. Sons of that great Samias. Mm -hmm. As we went together to Jerusalem to worship. Read. And offered the firstborn and the tents of the first fruits. Mm -hmm. And they were not seduced with the error of our brethren. Right. My brother, right. thou art of a good stock. You see what he's saying? He says, and they were not seduced with the error of our brethren. Meaning they did not find fault in the brethren. Why? Because he's coming, what he says, thou art of a good stock. You're coming from a good family. That's very important for you to know. You understand? You need to investigate those things. You understand? Find out who... Who they, who, who they are circle of friends. Find out what type of brother he is among the congregation, the men, you understand, that go to war and so forth. Ask leadership, ask the brothers also to find out what type this Negro, what type of Negro he is. You need to investigate that. You need to know. Why? Because you are making life and death decisions here. You understand? You have to prove him. Yes, you must know, yeah, he's got rank, he's doing works in the body and so forth. He's got a good name and all. You must investigate those things. But guess what? There's certain things that we might not know that he does when he's not among us. So those are the type of things that you're gonna only going to figure those out over time. You're not going to know those things immediately like that. You, it takes time. You understand? You need to understand those things. You need to know those things. What type of brother he is, okay? Is he just putting up a front? You need to know those things. The most High God has all the answers and how to investigate these things. The Lord has all of that. Now watch this. Give me, and guess what? Another thing that you need to understand is that because you might talk to the friends, right? Go back to Sirach 6. Watch this. Ecclesiasticus. Give me Sirach chapter 6 and read verse, 9, read verse 10. You know what? Read verse 7. Then we're going to read down. Read verse 7 again. We're going to read down. Select 6 verse 7. Please ask us of the 6 verse 7. Read. Ecclesiastes of the 6 verse 7. Read. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first and be not hasty to credit him. Don't be hasty to credit him. Go ahead. For some man is a friend for his own occasion. Now, right there, right there. And will not Hold abide. It says, for because some man is a friend for his own occasion. Remember what we read. It says, bring not every man into thine house. For the deceitful man has many tricks, has many trains. Why? Because there are only some of them, some of these men, they are only there for their own occasion. There's something they want, they get it, they leave after they get it. You understand? Or they come there, they make your life a living hell. Okay, read that again, verse 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 6, chapter six verse 8. Read. Right. For some man is, is a friend for his own occasion. Come on. And will not abide in the day of thy trouble. And will not abide in the day of thy trouble. When trouble comes, he skips town. You don't see him no more. Or he's not there for you. He does not know what to do or where to go in the scriptures to deal with the problem you got. You understand? Because sometimes the brother might look cute to you, you understand, but he's not matured in the scriptures to guide you and teach you. 
which is some, a lot of you brothers, you are not there yet, which means you are not ready to deal with a woman. Why? Because when problem comes, how are you going to use the scriptures to actually solve the problems in your marriage? How are you going to do that? Because you are going to be frustrated. You understand? And guess what? That's going to be the source of all your problems because why? You are spiritually immature. You don't know how to deal with this woman on the, in the scriptures and she can tell that you can't. And that's going to frustrate you because you're not going to understand why she don't get it. Because you don't get it yet. Okay, read that again. Jesus, the 6 verse 8. For some man is a friend for his own occasion. Read. And will not abide in the day of thy trouble. And will not abide in the day of thy trouble. Come on. And there is a friend who being turned to empty and strife will discover thy reproach. You see what the Lord is saying? It says, it says there is a friend who being turned to enmity, meaning, remember it says, will not abide in the day of thy trouble. Then it says, be quiet, because now there's trouble, he will be turned to an enemy and strife and will discover thy reproach. Now he's going to what? He's going to speak evil of you. They will speak evil of you now. So guess what? These are things that you need to test to see if there's a problem is he going to actually use the scriptures to resolve the problem? If he can't, is he going to go seek counsel or not? Or is he going to try to wing it? You also need to investigate those things because some brothers are too prideful. They're not going to go seek for counsel. And they're going to try to solve it on their own. And guess what? He's going to end up in a, in a, what? In a, in a big blow up. You must also investigate that too. That will he actually have the wisdom to say, you know what? This is above my pay grade. Let me go and seek counsel. Those are things you need to investigate as a sister. Okay, don't be naive. You understand? Don't just, just be giggling for stuff about every little... No, no, no. You must see. Is he reasoning out of the scriptures? Because that's the quickest way to tell if he's studying and he's applying and he's following the counsel that he's given. That's the quickest way. That's the quickest litmus test to see. You understand? If, he, his, his, if all his communication is in the scriptures, guess what? You're going to be able to see because, yes, his communication can be in the scriptures, but you must all do what? You must always look for the actions. Always pay attention to, give me First Samuel 2. I'm going to show you something. First Samuel 2 verse 3. Watch this. Okay. This is our foremother, Hannah. She's prophesying. The spirit of the Lord is upon him. Listen to what he says here. Read that. First Samuel chapter 2, verse 3. Go ahead. Talk no more so exceeding proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. Guess what? That's the standard. So that's the standard. You also, as a sister, you must look at that. You must, that's the standard you must use. Always pay attention to, the, to pay attention to what they do, what they say will ne- and what, what they say will never confuse you. Let me say that again. Always pay attention to what they say and what the, always pay attention to what they do so that what they say don't confuse you. That's some wise saying right there. Read that again, verse three. First Samuel chapter two, verse three. Ray. Talk no more so exceeding proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. Come on. For the Lord is a God of knowledge. Mm-hmm. And by him, actions are weighed. By him, actions are weighed. So sisters, that's what you must do. You pay close attention to what they do so that they don't confuse you with their words because they can confuse you. You understand? Give me Proverbs 10 verse 19. Proverbs chapter 10. Verse 19. Proverbs 10, verse 19. Mm -hmm. In the multitude of words, they wanteth not sin. But he that refraineth his lips is wise. You see what the Bible says? In the multitude of words, they wanteth not sin. Because they will speak all these words because they are not in the scriptures. Guess what? You just end up losing track of what they are saying. 
The law says there's sin sitting up in there because they are trying to confuse you. You understand? Sisters do that, but monstrous, evil, evil black men, they do that too. They speak, 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 but they never use the scriptures to bring clarity to your mind. They are trying to confuse you because there's sin hiding up in there. So as a sister, you must be well studied to be able to pick those things up. Okay? If they are not in this book. Now watch this. Guess what? We went over here. It says some man is a friend for his own occasion. You understand? Watch this. Because some brothers, they have a, they have, they, they're very good with the tongue. Okay? They are very good with the tongue. They got gain. And you sisters, if you're not in the scriptures, you will fall for that thing. Watch this. Give me Proverbs chapter 10, verse 18. Proverbs 10, verse 18. Go ahead. He that hideth hatred with lying lips, mm -hmm. and he that uttereth a slander, is a fool. You see what the Bible is saying? He that hideth hatred with lying lips. Because he's trying to confuse you. He's trying to run game on you. He's trying to entice you. You understand? But you see what the Bible is saying? It says, this evil Negro, he's hiding, he's hiding hatred with lying lips. He's deceiving you. But hatred is in his mind. You understand? It, that's why it says, some friend is a, is a, is a, he says what? Some man is a friend for his own occasion. Hiding hatred with lying lips. And he that uttereth a slender is a fool. Because remember what we read in, in Proverbs in 27? He says the utterance of a conceit in the heart of man. Meaning their reasoning. What's coming out of their mouth. You understand? Watch this. Give me 2 Samuel 13 verse 1. Okay. Because you might go, you might go and ask a brother about a brother that you are interested in, you want to prove, and they might give you an evil report, or they might give you lies about him because they, the two of them they talk one to another. They say, you know what? I like that sister right there. So when the sister comes to you and talk to you and ask you about me, give me a give give, give a good report. Some Negroes will do that in the truth. So don't run past that. You understand? They will do that thing. Second Samuel 13, verse 1. Here's an example. Samuel 13 verse 1. Right. And it came to pass after this that Absalom, the son of David, had a sister whose name was what? Tamar. Had a sister whose right. name was Tamar. Mm -hmm. And Amnon, the son of David, loved her. So now Amnon loved his sister. Okay, Amnon loved his sister Tamar, the son, the son of David, and she also was the daughter of David. Go ahead. And Amnon was so vexed that he mm. fell sick for his sister Tamar. You see that? For thing? she was, was a virgin. Vague. Hold on. And it Amnon says, thought it hurt for him to do anything to her. Okay, I need you to drop off and come back in because now you are, you are, there's delays. Okay. Yes, sir. Bear with us, brothers and sisters. Drop off and come back in. Okay, let's try this again. Second Samuel 13, verse 1 again. Shalom, sir. Yes, we can hear you. Second Samuel chapter 13, verse 1. Read Focus. that again. Second Samuel chapter 13, verse 1. Read. Right. And it came to pass after this that Absalom, the son of David, had a fair sister whose name was Tamar. And Amnon, the son of David, loved her. So he loved his own sister. Read on. Not in a not in a not in a lawful way. Go ahead. And Amnon was so vexed that he fell sick for his sister Tamar. Mm -hmm. For she was a virgin. 
She had not that dealt with any man. She was a young woman of marriageable age also. Go ahead. And Amnon thought it hard for him to do anything to her. So now Amnon is thinking of ways of dealing with her sister sexually. You understand? So he's going to devise an evil plan. Next verse. Go ahead. But Amnon had a friend whose name was Jonadab. You see that part right there? That, that right there, that's a monstrous evil black negro. You see that thing right there? So was, Am, uh, so was Amnon. Amnon was the same way. He was an evil negro. You understand? So he was an evil black negro, this guy right here, Amnon and Jonadab. So Jonadab was that slick nick who always came up with ways on, on how to deceive. You understand? Go back to Sirach, Sirach 11 verse 29. This was the spirit that Amnon, I mean, Jonadab was rolling in. And Amnon was in support of it because he went to him to seek counsel. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 29. Go ahead. Bring not every man into thine house. For the deceitful man hath many trains. You see that thing? For the deceitful, because the deceitful man has many tricks. Now we're going to see some of the tricks that this deceitful man, Jonadab, is going to come up with. Go back to 2 Samuel 13, verse 3. 2 Samuel 13, verse 3. Ray? But Amnon had a friend whose name was Jonadab, the son of Shimea, the Shimea, David's brother. Mm -hmm. And Jonadab was a very subtle man. You see that part right there? And Jonadab was a very subtle man. He had many trains. He had many tricks. You understand? He was a very subtle man. He was a monster. He was hiding hatred with his lying lips, with his tricks. You understand? Watch this. Jump down to verse 5 now. Verse 5. Mm -hmm. And Jonadab said unto him, Lay thee down on thy bed and make thyself sick. Mm. And when thy father cometh to see thee, say unto him, I pray thee, let my sister Tamar come and give me meat and dress the meat in my sight that I may see it and eat it at her hand. You see, you see the game now? He says, listen, he says, play sick. Pretend that you are sick. You understand? It says, and make, says, make yourself sick. So he's not sick, but he's going to make himself sick. He says, when your father come to see you, tell your father, listen, listen, I'll rather have Tamar come and be the one that is going to take care of me. And I'm going to eat meat at her hand. She's going to feed me. That's what Jonadab is telling Amnon to do. You understand? Ray? So Amnon lay down and made himself sick. Mm. And when the king was come to see him, Amnon said unto the king, I pray thee, let Tamar, my sister, come and make me a couple of cakes in my sight that I may eat at her hand. And remember, King David is not thinking nothing of it. You understand? He is not thinking anything of it. Jump down to verse 10 now. Read. Verse 10. And Amnon said unto Tamar, Bring the meat into the chamber that I may eat of thine hand. And Tamar took the cakes which she had made and brought them into the chamber to Amnon, her brother. You see that thing? She, she is, okay, she made the cakes. She brought them the cakes to his, to his chamber, to his bedroom. You understand? Okay. So she can feed him. Go ahead. And when she had brought them unto him to eat, mm -hmm. he took hold of her and Come said on. unto her, Ray? Come, lie with me, my sister. He says, come, lie with me, my sister. Meaning what? Have sex with me. That's what he's asking. Read. And she answered him, nay, my brother, do not force me. For, for no such thing ought to be done in Israel. Do thou not this folly. You see what she's saying? Listen, don't force me, meaning don't rape me. Because such a thing is not supposed to be done in Israel, you evil Negro. You horny toad. That's what's going on here. He had such a lust for his sister that he was willing to do anything and everything to sleep with his sister. Read. 
And she answered him. Verse 13. And I, whither shall I cause my, my shame to go? Because she was a virgin. He says, I'm going to cause my shame to go. Why should I cause my shame to go? Read. And as for thee, thou shalt be as one of the fools in Israel. You're going to be a dumbass in Israel. Go ahead. Dumbass is in the Bible. In First Peter's. Read. Now therefore, I pray thee, speak unto the king, for he will not withhold me from thee. You see, she was clever. She said, listen, talk to my father. Talk to Pops. You know, Pops is not going to withhold me from you. Because he knew David was not going to agree to that thing. You understand? So she was clever. She used wisdom on this one. Watch the next verse. Go ahead. <clears throat> How be it, he would not hearken unto her voice, but being stronger than she, forced her and lay with her. So she, he raped his sister. You understand? He forced her. He broke his virginity. He broke her virginity. That's what he did. You understand? Because of the lust of the flesh. Okay? And he listened to that slick negro, which is so-called his friend. You understand? Guess what? In the truth, you will find negroes crept in unawares that are going to give the same advice to the simple knee simpletons that will be here longer that do not want to follow counsel, that have the Rehoboam spirit. You understand? Go ahead. Verse 15. Verse 15. Mm -hmm. Then Amnon hated her exceedingly. You see that thing? You see what she... Hold on. Wait, wait. Read verse 15 again. Second Samuel, chapter 13, verse 15. Mm -hmm. Then Amnon hated her exceedingly. Then Amnon hated his sister exceedingly. He, he hated his sister exceedingly. You understand? Read. So that the, the hatred wherewith he hated her was greater than the love wherewith he loved her. You see that thing? So they, that, that level of hatred, it was sitting deep in his spirit. You understand? It needed, it needed the right conditions to pop out. So Amnon was a monster. You understand? He was a monster. He was a monstrous, evil, black Negro. That's what Amnon was. He says, then the Am Amnon hated her exceedingly. It wasn't any type of hate. You understand? So that the hatred wherewith he hated her was greater than the love wherewith he had loved her. He no longer had love for his sister. He hated her exceedingly now. Because now he forced her, he raped her, he broke her virginity. Now he says, get the hell out. Now he's hating his sister. You understand? Ray? And Amnon said unto her, arise, be gone. Because now he got his rocks off. After he got his rocks off, he got, he got rid of the, of the sister. You understand? But what I'm showing you here is, go back to Proverbs 10 verse 18. Go back there. Proverbs 10, verse 18 again. Proverbs 10, verse 18. Read. He that hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that uttereth a slander is a fool. Because Amnon was a fool, but he was not, he was a what? He was a monstrous fool. He was a monster, though. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 18. Go ahead. He that hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that uttereth the slander is the fool. So now Amnon, he, hide, he, he was hiding hatred with his lying lips. Because what was the lying lips? Was the counsel he received from Jonah there. That was the lying lips, but he had hatred in his mind. Because guess what? Watch this. Give me that in Sirach chapter 19. Sirach chapter 19 and verse 26. Watch this. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 19, verse 26. Read. There is a wicked man that hangeth down his head sadly, mm -hmm. but inwardly he is full of deceit. Because Amnon, he played sick. He wasn't really sick, but he played sick. He says what? There is a wicked man that hangeth down his head sadly, but inwardly he is full of deceit. He is full of BS. He's full of anger. You understand? He's full of hatred. He's got a murder, he's got a murderous mindset. You understand? 
He's an evil, slick Negro. So now, watch this. Need, read the next verse. Verse 27. Go Casting ahead. down his countenance mm -hmm. and making as if he heard not. You see that thing? He will cast down his countenance and making as if he heard not. Some brothers do that too. Go ahead. Where he is not known. No, when nobody he knows will, what, hold on. When nobody knows how evil he is, guess what he will do? Go ahead. He will do thee a mischief before thou be aware. You see what the Bible is saying? He's going to do you a mischief before you are aware. So how are you, you, the only way you can be aware before he does the mischief, you have to prove him. That's the only way to be, for you to be aware of the mischief before it takes place. But as long as you don't prove you are walking after your last, guess what? You don't want to see through it. You don't want to see how evil, how a monster he is. You're not going to see that thing. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Jeremiah 9 verse 4. Jeremiah chapter 9 verse 4. Go ahead. Take ye heed every one of his neighbor and trust ye not in any brother. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, take ye heed. Take ye heed every one of his neighbor. Remember what we read. Go back to what we read in the book of Ecclesiastes 36 verse 21. Let's write 36 21. I want the sisters to understand this thing. Okay. Ecclesiasticus chapter 36, verse 21. Read. Right. A woman will receive every man, yet is one daughter better than another. A woman will receive every man. A woman that will receive every man into her house, guess what? You are going to be deceived by a slick Negro. You are going to be deceived by these wicked and evil men. You are going to de be deceived by them. You understand? Because you are not taking heed like the scripture says. You are not proving like the scripture says. You are not taking your time like the scripture says. You're going to end up with a monster who's going to abuse you, who will end up killing you. Okay? Go back to Sarah, Go back to Jeremiah 9 verse 4. Jeremiah chapter 9 verse 4. Go ahead. Take ye heed every one of his neighbor and trust you not in any brother. Don't trust in any brother. Don't just trust in any brother that you, you allow to come into your life. No, 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 no. In the truth, you can't be naive. You understand? Brothers come from all walks of life. You don't know what demons they was dealing with. You don't know if, the demon, if they are dealing with those demons. You don't know. You understand? You have no idea what brothers be dealing with. When they are by themselves, we don't see them. You don't know what type of monster they have, what type of monster they are. You have no idea. Read, the, read, read, read verse 4 again. Jeremiah chapter 9 verse 4. Come on. Take ye heed every one of his neighbor and trust ye not in any brother. Don't, trust, don't just trust in any brother. Read. For every brother will utterly supplant. He will utterly supplant. He will deceive you. You understand? He will lie to you. You understand? He will hide hatred with his lying lips. He will hang, his, he will hang down his head sadly, but inwardly he's full of deceit. Go ahead. And every neighbor will walk with slanders. And every neighbor will walk with slanders. That's that Negro that walking around with ha ha having hatred in his heart and he's hiding it with his lying lips. That's what we read in Proverbs. Read. And they will deceive everyone his neighbor. You see what the Bible is saying? They will deceive everyone his neighbor. Because they don't care about the nation. They don't care about you as the sister. They don't give a damn about you. They only care about themselves and to get their rocks off and to make your life a living hell and to destroy your life. You understand? Read. And will not speak the truth. They will not what? And will not speak the truth. They are, but they are liars. They lie. They will not speak the truth. You understand? We used to be in the world. We used to be evil Negroes. Now we are in this truth now. We're getting ourselves right. We're getting rid of that wicked, black, ashy demon Negro. Okay? With the word of the Most High God. That's why it says, so is the utterance of a conceit 
in the, in the heart of men. Their reasoning must be out of the scriptures. They also must be applying the scriptures. They must not be quoting the script, but they must apply it. Read. They have taught their tongue to speak lies. You see that? You see what the Bible is saying? They have taught. That means they are accustomed to lying. Meaning lying is, comes, is a default setting to them. You understand? Read. And weary themselves to commit iniquity. They weary themselves, meaning they tire themselves to commit iniquity. What does it mean to weary? Meaning what? They cannot rest until they plant, they, they plant mischief. Give me that in Proverbs. Okay. They're not going to rest until they plant mischief. Give me Proverbs 4. Give me Proverbs 4 verse 14. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 14. Read. Enter not into the path of the wicked mm -hmm. and go not in the way of evil men. That's talking about, you know, we're talking in the context of the, the class, we're talking about to you sisters. He says, enter not in the path of the wicked and go not out and go not in the way of evil men. Read. Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it and pass away. The only way you'll be able not to do that, you must know the scriptures. You must prove him. Read. For they sleep not. You see that part right there? Mischief. They sleep not. That means they exhaust themselves in, in sin. They are planning evil, how to destroy you. You understand? They are premeditating on how they're going to destroy you. It says, for they sleep not. They are always plotting and planning and scheming on how they are going to destroy you. That's why he's saying, it says, for they sleep not. Go ahead, except they what? Except they have done mischief. Except they've done mischief. Go ahead. And their sleep is taken away. Correct. And some to fall. You see what? You see what? It says their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. So if your sleep is taken away, that means you are exhausted. What are you existing yourself with? You're existing yourself with seeing another fall, seeing a sister destroyed, seeing a sister being abused. You understand? Being misused, me being mistreated. You understand? Being put to death. Go ahead. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. Meaning what? This is a violent Negro. They are violent. They are a monster. You understand? That beast is just sitting on the inside because it's not being examined. You understand? So that's why I need you sisters. When we give you counsel, follow the counsel. You understand? Don't like how the message is coming out. No, I don't like the way leadership is talking to me. Listen, sister. This is to help you. This is to protect you. You understand? I'm showing you how serious this is. This is not a game. You understand? Brother, brothers are coming from the world. They are coming in here. Some will not want to repent. Some will hide behind the Bible. Some will not want to examine themselves and get their minds right. But they'll still be in here. You want to hook up with them, you end up dead. Why? Because you don't follow counsel. You understand? Watch this. Now, I'm going to switch. I'm going to switch. Um, watch this. You know what? Hmm. Give me Proverbs 20, verse 11. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 11. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 11. Read. Even a child is known by his doings. You see what the Bible is saying? Even a child is known by his doings. Meaning from a child you can tell. Hmm, something going on here. You understand? Something wrong with that spirit right there. So guess what? Brothers coming into the truth, you can pick up what type of spirits they are. You understand? You can pick up. That's what the scriptures is telling us. Read it again. Proverbs 20, verse 11. Read. Even a child is known by his doings. Even a child is known by his doings. Go ahead. Whether his work be pure and whether it be right. You see that thing? But you're going to know them nonetheless. That's what the Lord is teaching us right here. Watch this. Give me that in Genesis 8, 21.
Genesis chapter 8, verse 21. Come on. And the Lord smelled a sweet savor. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for men's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. You see what the Bible is saying? For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. So you can know by their doing from when they are young, you can tell. That's why the Bible is there to make sure that you drive that evil spirit out of them with the word of the Lord. And don't play with them. Now give me that in Sarah 17, 16. Ecclesiastes chapter 17, verse 16. Ecclesiastes chapter 17, verse 16. Read. Right. Every man from his youth is given to evil. You see what the Bible is saying? Every man from his youth is given to evil. The reason why he's given to evil is because there is too idle. You understand? There is no man commanding you and teaching you and putting the, the laws of God on your neck to make sure that you move correctly. Read. Neither could they make to themselves fleshly hearts for stony. Because guess what? Because they are what their heart is hardened by sin. That's why it says from his youth is given to evil. If you are given to evil from your youth, when you grow, you will grow with it. And the evil will grow. Your mind is going to be hardened by that evil that you grow up with. When you come now, you come into the truth. So that means before you came into the truth, your whole life, you've been giving your life to evil. Now you come into the truth. You mean to tell me that you, in, in six months, everything is all good? You ready to prove a brother? Are you kidding? You are not ready. Because he says, he says, every man from his youth is given to evil. They have to rewrite the evil that there was in the world. And that takes time. You understand? Patience is very necessary. Understand that thing. Okay, now watch this. This week, Karabo Mokwena's family and friends speak out about her battle with abuse and their biggest fear realized. I told her straight to Karabo, Sandy is going to kill me. You see that thing right there? This is a story that made the headlines, okay? This boy called Sandy Day that killed this sister. You understand? He put the sister to death, okay? And the mothers were warning her, listen, this man is going to kill you. She did not listen to her parents. You understand? Because she was in lust, not love. Our victim blaming minister of women weighs in. Whilst Karabo came across as very strong, but internally he was weak. She was weak and hence she became a victim of abuse. And failed by the police. Pilila Gumeta's family does its own detective work to track down their loved one. This is Checkpoint, and I'm in Kepile Mabuse. Her tragic death has sparked a painful national conversation. Karabo Mugwena's burnt body was thrown into a ditch after her ex-boyfriend allegedly murdered her. You see that thing right there? Yeah. Not only did, did he abuse the sister, he abused the sister, he was beating her, you understand? He was punching her upside the head. Look how the sister looks. Not, no, that was not enough. He killed the sister and burned the body up. You can't make this stuff up. You understand? That's a monster right there. That's what the Lord is talking about right here. So I need you sisters to pay attention. Okay? Now those who love the 22-year-old are speaking out about the repeated abuse they say she suffered at the hands of Sandile Manzwe and how desperate she was to escape it. In this exclusive report, Karen Morn tells the heartbreaking story of Karabo Mugwena's terrible death and how it's again exposed the shocking levels of violence against South African women. Even with success, people are not interested in where you come from. No one wants to know you're from Soweto, you were raped. No. So this is the sister. This is our, our lovely sister, May, so rest in peace. This is our sister that was brutally murdered by that monstrous evil black Negro. Okay. 
People just want to know how you overcame it. Mm. You can give us your problem from A to People just want to know the solution. Yo, you went through this, and therefore, how did you come out of it? Mm. No one wants to know it's okay. Mina, I saw not. Stop playing victim. The world owes you nothing. Arise. Karabo Makwena was determined that her life would matter, that one day, everyone would know her name. But in the weeks before her death, the 22-year-old was a very different woman from the passionate and confident young person you've just seen. In this voice note, Karabo tells a friend that her ex-boyfriend... This is the evil Negro. That's, the, that's that monster that murdered this child, this sister right here. This is the monster, okay? Sandile Manswe has accused her of assault after she says he attacked her. See, now he is even framing the sister. You understand? He abuses the sister and then he frames the sister. You see that thing? Um, he got robbed in um, Brahm, um, I think two days after he hit me and um, he fell at Kobuha. And he went to the police station and told them that um, that was me that uh, assaulted him. Unbelievable. Like, unbelievable. He, he beat the sister. The next day he gets robbed. Who did that? The Lord did that thing. You understand? And then he goes to the police. He blames it on the sister so that he can throw suspicion off of himself. You see that thing? Give me that in uh, Sirach 11 verse 29. Read that thing again. Okay, Sirach 11 verse 29 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 29. Read. Bring not every man into thine house, for the deceitful man hath many trains. You see what the Bible is saying? For the deceitful man hath many trains. He has many tricks up his sleeve. You understand? So he just lied to the police already. Now he's lying to the police now. You understand? He is raising up a false report. Give me that in Exodus 23 real quick. Okay? Exodus 23, verse 1. Read that. Exodus 23, verse 1. Read. Thou shalt not read false report. Put not thine hand with thine with the wicked to the be an unrighteous witness. Read that again. Read it right. Verse 1. Exodus chapter 3 verse 1. Thou shalt not raise a false report. Put not thine hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. Because he's a liar. So guess what? This brother was moving with the spirit of what? Hatred. Abuse, hatred, and murder. We're going to deal with them step by step. But what I'm showing you is that he's a slick Negro. You understand? He's a monster. Okay? So he went and, and raised a false report so that the police don't suspect him. If So in case the sister goes to the police and tells them what happened, he already beat her to the what? He beat her to the police already. You understand? He got there first. Watch this. Give me that in Ecclesiasticus. Okay? It's like 42. No, no, not 42. Watch, watch this. Sirach 41. Sirach 41 and verse... Hold on, wait. No, no, Sirach 12. That's what I want. Sirach chapter 12. Mm, that's the one. Yo, when I watch this thing, this really vexes my spirit. Give me Sirach 12, okay? Sirach chapter 12 and verse... Verse 11. Start of verse 10. Okay, Sirach chapter 12, verse 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 10. Mm -hmm. Never trust thine enemy. For like as iron rusteth, so is his wickedness. So we always use this for the other nations, but this also applies for Israel. You understand? Our people first and foremost, because this, this Bible was given to us. The Bible is saying, never trust thine enemy. For like as iron rusted, so is his wickedness. So it is with this guy right here that killed his sister. Okay, come on.
Though he humbled himself, though he humbled himself, he is humbling himself. He went to the police. You understand? Go ahead. And go crouching. Mm -hmm. Yet take good heed and beware of him. Read. And thou shalt be unto him as if thou hast wiped a looking glass. The looking glass is the Bible. And thou? The looking glass is the Bible. Okay, go ahead. And thou shalt know that his rest hath not been altogether wiped away. That's why the Lord is saying that you must prove him first. You try the spirit by the spirit. You must use the looking glass to investigate the Negro. That's your job. Okay. Read on. Verse 12. Come on. Verse 12. Set him not by thee. Lest when he hath overthrown thee, he stand up in thy place. Come on. Neither let him sit at thy right hand, lest he seek to take thy seat. Right. And thou be at the lost, and thou at the lost remember my words, and be pricked therewith. And be deceived, and be put to death, and abused, like we see what happened to the sister. You understand? It says, lest, he says what? It says, neither let him sit at thy right hand, lest he seek to take thy seat. Because what did he do? He abused the sister today. Tomorrow he gets robbed because the Lord judged him. Then he, he goes to the police. He blames the sister. So did he love the sister? No, he did not love the sister. He had hatred for the sister. You understand? Jump down to verse 16. Verse 16. Mm -hmm. an, enemy, an enemy speaketh sweetly with his lips. Because that's why but he in his heart. the sister. Hold on. He seduced, he was seducing the sister. That's how he ended up, that's how the sister ended up with this Negro. You understand? He was, she was enticed by this wicked Negro. Because there's an enemy speaketh sweetly with his lips, but in his heart he imagined how to overthrow thee into a pit. That's exactly what he did when he went to the police. Read. He will weep with his eyes, mm -hmm. but if he find opportunity, he will not be satisfied with blood. That's exactly what he did. Okay, let's play on. So I I just I was like, wow. You know, if someone can go to that extent. And while he was hitting me, I think I fell on top of his car and it got dented. And he told the police that I damaged his car. You can make this stuff up. He was beating the sister upside the head and the sister bumped the a uh, bumped uh, bumped on the car and the car got damaged and he went to the police and said listen he she damaged my car. So he was painting the sister as the devil but he was the devil. You see that thing? Let's keep playing on, okay? So I just said, ah, you know what, this person, I don't have the energy for this, you know. God will deal with him. I, I'm tired personally. You see, the sister's spirit was broken. Watch this. Give me that in Proverbs chapter 18, okay? Proverbs chapter 18, verse 22. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 22. Read. Whoso findeth the wife, findeth no, no, I'm the sorry. good thing. I'm sorry, Proverbs 17, verse 22. Proverbs 17, 22. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22. Go ahead. A, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine, mm -hmm. but a broken spirit dryeth the bones. Because the sister's spirit was broken. That's why she's saying what he's saying. She says, God will deal with him. I'm tired personally because guess what? Her spirit was broke. Okay. Exactly 17 days after Karabo sent that message, her body was found here. So 17 days later, her body was found here. So this is the crime scene. Okay. Burning among the rubbish. Mm. 27-year-old Manswe is now charged with Karabo's premeditated murder. 
Behind the horrific crime he stands accused of lies a story of alleged repeated. Yes, yes, look at this. Is now charged with Carabo's premeditated murder. So the murder was premeditated, okay? Behind the horrific crime he stands accused of. Look at the system. Just look at the system. You sisters, I need you to wake the hell up, okay? Story of alleged repeated. Look at that. Look at the system, okay? And violent abuse. Those premeditated murder. I don't think you brothers see, actually pick that up. Watch this. Behind the horrific crime he stands accused of lies a story of alleged repeated and violent. Right there. You see her forehead? Look at her forehead. That's a knee right there. That's a knee. Only a knee can do stuff like that. A knee. A blunt instrument or a knee can do that thing. Look at her face. Look at her forehead. You see what she looks like? abuse i told her straight get cut up sandy was going to and this me. is the mother now you understand you can't go on like this this is not now this is not toxic relationship i don't know what to call this no this one i know i told her but you know our kids so I asked him. Give me the book of uh, Exodus, okay? Give me Exodus 20. You see, the mother is like, really, she's in pain, okay? Give me Exodus chapter 20 and verse 12. Read that. Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. Read. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Because the parents are not supposed to be burying their kids. That's not according to the laws of the Most High. You understand? This person was killing you. She said, yes, ma, he was. Karabo started dating Sandile Manswe in October last year. What I know is she was looking for love. She was so longing for someone who would love her for who she is and understand him. And more than anything, Karabo was praying for a, for a God-fearing man. It's for eight minutes past six. We're hanging out with See, because this brother was not a God fearing man. You understand? He was not a God fearing man. Go back to Sirach 37, verse 12. This is how you spot a God fearing man. Watch this. Sirach 37, verse 12. Read that. Let's read it again. Ecclesiastes 37, verse 12. But be continually with the godly man whom thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord. You see that part right there? Whom thou knowest to keep the commandments of the law. That's a godly man who keep God's laws. Okay, read. Who, whose mind is according to thy mind. Read. And sorrow with thee if thou shalt miscarry. You see that thing right there? That's not, that's, not, that's not the characteristics of this Negro right here. This was a monstrous, ashy, black demon. Okay. He was not a God fearing man. The man, seven years old, making hundreds of thousands every week. Mansue styles himself as a highly successful forex trader, even appearing on radio to discuss the hundreds of thousands of rands he claims to you see make. That? You see a lot of them in Santin, by the way. You see, a, you see a lot of them here in Kalfontein. You see a lot of them in Santin, in Tembisa, wherever. They are all over Pretoria. You understand? They are claiming to be these billionaires and trillionaires, okay? But when they know how to do forex trading. And our young sisters just fall for that BS, okay? He was a forex trader. Um... And this is the so-called pastor. Hmm. This is the so-called pastor. His job, give me the book of Jeremiah 44, okay? His job was supposed to groom this young man according to the way of the Lord, but they don't apply what is written in this Bible. Okay. Give me Jeremiah 44. Okay. Jeremiah chapter 44 and verse. Give me one second. It's 
Been a while, it's been a while. Give me Jeremiah 23 verse 16. Let's just get there. Okay, it's not part of my notes. Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 16. Pray. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, mm -hmm. concerning the... Hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain. Ray. They speak a vision of their own heart and mm -hmm. not out of the mouth of the Lord. That's the problem with these so-called pastors. They don't teach these young men the laws of the Most High God. They just speak out of their own mind. Give me now Ezekiel chapter 44, verse 23. Read that. Ezekiel chapter 44, verse 23. Come on. And they shall teach my people the difference between the holy and profane. That was his and job. His job, the, hold on. The job of this pastor was to teach that young man the difference between the holy things of the Lord and the profane things of the world. Go ahead. And cause them to discern between the unclean and the clean. Cause this young man to know right from wrong. That was his job. You understand? That was his job right there. Let's keep playing on. The people who wanted to know, they would ask him for advice and he would give um, that kind of advice. Uh, the little that I know is that, yes, his life was taking an upward curve. And um, he, I mean, we were, we were hoping to see one of the stars this country has ever produced. But it seems Mansway funded much of his lifestyle by running Forex training courses at 6,000 Rand. Hold on. Oh, and promising big money to those who... Let's go back a little bit. ...has ever produced. But it seems Mansway funded much of his lifestyle by running Forex training courses at 6,000 Rand a go. Isn't that what all these young men are doing today? They say they are Forex experts. Their course was 6,000 Rand. You understand? 6,000. Now watch this. Hmm. Give me... Give me the book of Leviticus. Okay, give me Leviticus 25. Watch this. Leviticus chapter 25 and 17. You know what's that? Verse 15. So, because they are doing price fixing. You understand? Defrauding the, the, the ignorant of our people who don't really understand what this is about. Read that. Leviticus 25 verse 15. We're going to read down. Leviticus 25 verse 15. Read. According to the number of years after the Jubilee, Thou shalt buy of thy neighbor according unto the number of years of the fruits he shall sell unto thee. So now it goes into what we reap from the heart. The, the, we reaping from the field that because we would plant, we own land. You understand? Right? According to the multitude of years, thou shalt increase the price thereof. So the multitude the, of years goes in, hold on. The multitude of years goes into the crops. It says what? It says, according to the multitude of years, thou shalt increase the price thereof. The multitude of years goes into the crops that you would harvest from the field and sell to your people. Go ahead. And according to the fewness of years, thou shalt diminish the price of it. So now the fewness of years is talk about the, the number of crops, which was less that year that you produced. So the Lord is saying, it says what he says, you shall diminish the price of it. So what was what, what, what our forefathers was doing here is that, keep reading, I'm going to explain, keep going. For according to the number of the years of the fruits doth he sell unto thee. So what would happen is that when the demand was high, guess what? When the demand was high, they would make sure that the price is high. You understand? When the supply was high, the price was low. So they were doing price fixing. That's what they was doing. They were not dealing justly. Read the next verse. The next verse is going to tell you that. Verse 17. Ye shall not therefore oppress one another. You see what? You see that thing right there? Hold on. It says you shall therefore not oppress one another. You shall not therefore oppress one another. So the Lord was teaching us how to do what? how to trade justly. But today, you see, what, what the Lord is teaching us here is what? This, was, this is, call, is calling supply and demand. 
the most High god was teaching us how to deal with right righteously with one another when it comes to trade but what we're seeing here with the cost of six thousand rand that's not dealing justly that's dealing unjustly so what does the lord call that read verse 17 again leviticus chapter 25 17 read ye shall not therefore oppress one another but thou shalt fear the lord that, but thou shalt fear thy God, for I am the Lord your God. You see that thing? Don't oppress one another. So this is thousand cost for a cause that's called oppression. That's what God calls it. And promising big money to those who invested their cash with him. His highest qualification, however, is a degree in graphic design. Mm -hmm. And Carabo told those close to her, that Mansue owed a lot of people a lot of money. You see that thing? Look, Zandile to his family was uh, um, a warm-hearted person, a humble uh, guy who um, loved to, to give. He loved to be um, joyful. To the church, he was, he was an evangelist, a great evangelist. I mean, we did a lot together. We did preaching in the trains, preaching in prison, preaching at the taxi ranks. We did a lot together. That don't, you see that? That's Christianity for you. They don't teach nothing. They don't teach law and order. You understand? So it says he was a great evangelist. Okay, watch this. Go back to Sirach chapter 19, verse 26. And he uses us to pay attention. You understand? Ecclesiastes. Chapter 19, verse 26. Read. There is a wicked man that hangeth down his head sadly, but inwardly he is full of deceit. You see that thing? He looked like everything is all good, but inwardly was full of deceit. He was a monster. Read. Casting down his countenance and making as if he heard not. Where he is not known, he will do thee a mischief before thou be away. What did he do? He put the sister to death. Okay. Let's keep playing. But despite those claims of faith, Karabo's loved ones say the young woman showed signs of repeated abuse. You see that thing? Look at the sister now. We're going to deal with, I'm going to go into that right now. Her seven-month relationship with Manswe. Within a month of the couple starting to date, Karabo told friends he had smashed her phone and pushed her into a wall. Mm. Her family only became aware of the abuse two months before her death. You see that? So he's only been with this guy for seven months. You understand? Seven months. And look what in seven months, there are the level of mon the level of demons that is sitting on this boy. Okay. She told me that. He, he hit her. Then this guy hit Karabu. So this, this is the younger brother. I was like, I break up with this guy, arrest him or do something to get rid of him. Because I could see Karabu uh, loved this guy a lot. The first time he hit Pat Karabu, right here. And she had like, a, she, she was swelling here. Was like, you see that right there? Look at that. Hmm. Jesus. In the second time, they said it was at a club. He beat up Karabo like she was down, beating her, beating her, beating her. Like I had this anger inside of me, but I couldn't do anything. Cause like, yeah, I couldn't do anything. I was helpless. Then Karabo told, I told Karabo, I told Karabo to tell my father. And then that's when my father did something. She was still swollen here. Yeah. And then I wanted to go and approach Sandile. And Karabo said to me, no, mom, this guy is crazy. She even knew. She knew what type of Negro this was. He was a monster and she knew it. It's okay. She always says that. It is well. And I said, Karabo, I just want to ask him why... Who gave him the right to do this to you? Karabo's relationship with Manswe seemingly became more violent as it intensified. The pair appear to have been living together at the upmarket Santon Sky apartment block. 
the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. You see how powerful those things are? You overlook all the red flags. You don't even listen to your parents when they're advising you. Stay away from this monster. They don't want to leave. You sisters, a brother puts hands on you, you better call the police immediately. You understand? Don't call me. Call the police, then call me after. Where they were living together. So everything that was happening there was happening there. And uh, we, we, we thought that things were going okay. When we saw them together, we saw um, people who were happy. I was at work, I got a call from her. She said she's in hospital, morning inside for the hospital. She was beaten. I cried at work. I said, but why, Karamu, why? And Mama Sandile just threw me here in hospital, left me with the cut, broke my phone, and bought the new one. This conversation happened just over a month before Karabo was murdered. After the urging of her mother and father, Karabo laid a charge against Manswe, who had laid a charge against her. You see, this guy, this guy is full of demons. He does all this stuff and he goes to the police to lay a charge against the sister. Her mother also urged her to get a protection order. She, she said to me, Mom, it's not going to do any good to me. Why, 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 why must I do that? I said, Carabo, but Carabo. She said, you know what? This guy is evil. Mom, she doesn't, he doesn't care. And I know where he is now. He's planning something for me. Those close to the young woman say she was emotionally destroyed by the abuse she suffered. She even says to me, I don't think anybody realizes what this has done to me. She said, Ma, physically I'm healed, but emotionally I'm torn apart. He say, she says to me, this guy wanted to ruin me. I said, Kiarabu, he was killing you. She says, yes. And she says, guess what? He is not remorse. He doesn't even, he's not apologetic. I always say to Karabu, come back home, Karabu. No one's chased you out of this house. This is your home. Come back home and be with us and live your life to the fullest. Don't go after, what's wrong with you going after Sandile? What is, what is there that makes you stay in this relationship? With Sandile, come back home, Karabo. Her friend Queen Lebo Mkize, who was part of the Kings and Queens Christian cell group she attended, says Karabo regarded that beating as a wake-up call and desperately wanted to change her life. But she was also struggling to cope emotionally. She sent the message to say, can you imagine uh, two weeks after he had beaten me, I'm seeing him buying a girl flowers and a perfume. So I'm like, so where did you see? She's like, no, it's on Instagram. She said, Ma, when was so this? So this guy, not family? only was he doing this to the sister, he was even a homemonger. You understand? This guy was a monster. He's still a monster because he's in jail now. You understand? But he's a monster. I want you sisters to understand something. When we tell you don't do this, don't do that, it's not because we just, uh, we are controlling. No, no, we are trying to protect you as the scripture says to do. You understand? We're looking out for you because you don't know, really truly know a brother. You understand? You need to pay very close attention. This is serious business here, okay? She says, does anybody understand how I feel right now? She felt worthless. She felt that she's not worth it because that's how she used to be made to feel. Because how do you beat someone and continue like nothing happened? And you even taking pictures with yourself with other girls? So uh, he said, there's a place where she said, he's heartless, heartless, heartless. Wicked, wicked, wicked. Mkize, like Lolo McQuena, says Karabo sent her pictures documenting the abuse she had suffered in the weeks before her death. 
She also recounted so what had happened. When she says, is my heart, I'm hurt. I don't even have the energy to go on or face the case. Okay. Queen Lebum Kiza, Karabo, this person was killing you, Moose. And detailed her fragile... He really was, and he's not apologetic. He opened a case against me too. You see that thing? That's what we read in Sabak 41. Emotional state. Physically, I'm okay, but mentally and emotionally, I'm so broken. Go back to Proverbs 17, verse 22 again. Proverbs 17, verse 22. Wait. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, mm -hmm. but a broken spirit dryeth the bones. But a broken spirit dryeth the bones. That's where she was, the sister. That's where our sister was. Her spirit was broken up. You understand? Series of heartbreaking WhatsApp messages. So I asked her, when I saw the pictures, I was scared. I could not believe that in this day and age, there's a man that can hit somebody's child in that manner. So I asked her, this person was killing you. She said, yes, my, he was. When we return, I approached him. I said, Sandile, what did you do to Karabo? Instead, he greeted me like Mamzu. And I was so... Why are you still saying Mamzo? Mamzo. Where's my daughter? You see, he's, he's, he's absent-minded. He's not even there. Watch this. Let's go back to the pictures. But in the week... Heartless, heartless, heartless. Wicked, wicked, wicked. Mkize, like Lolo McQuena, says Karabo sent okay, pictures... Okay, watch this. Give me the book of uh, Proverbs 6, verse 12. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 12. So what we're seeing here, we're seeing a case of hatred. We see a case of abuse and a murderous, monstrous, evil, black, ashy demon that, that was this guy. This guy, Sandile, that's everything I said, that's exactly what he is. Watch this. Proverbs 6, verse 12. Read that. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 12. Read. A naughty person. That's what a he wicked was. man. That's, hold on. He's a naughty person. He's naughty. Okay, come on. A wicked man. He was a wicked man. Remember the wicked. auntie? The auntie said he was wicked, wicked, wicked. That's what we're reading here. Read. Walketh with a forward mouth. Walketh with a forward mouth. Keep reading. Verse 13. Come on. He winketh with his eyes. He winketh with his eyes because what? He's a slick negro. Okay, come on. He speaketh with his feet. He was kicking the sister in the forehead. Remember we, we, what the picture we saw with the sister? She's, the sister had a huge swell in her forehead because what he was speaking with his feet. He kicked the sister upside the head. Go ahead. He teacheth with his fingers. He was abusing the sister. Look at the sister. You understand? The eye is completely turned red. You understand? Because this guy is a monster. Keep going. Verse 13. None of his 14. Wait. Forwardness is in his heart. Forward he divides his sin. Sin, evil, demons is in his mind. Go ahead. He divides mischief continually. Mm -hmm. He soweth discord. He says he divides mischief continually. Remember what the mother said? The mother said, the Karabo told, called, told her that, listen, he is planning evil right now. I know where he is. I know he's planning evil for me. That's what we're reading. It says he devised mischief continually. So she knew what type of Negro this was. You understand? So when we warn you, sisters, pay attention, study, seek counsel, follow the counsel. Don't do your own thing. You understand? Read. Give me, give me, give me the previous chain. It's in the articles now. Ecclesiastes chapter 23, verse 10. Go ahead. For as a servant that is continually beaten you see shall not this be. Sister, hold on. This sister was continually beaten. You see what he says? For as a servant that is continually beaten, the sister was continually beaten by this monster. Okay. Maintaining the abuse she had suffered. Look in at that. 
That's our sister right there. She was continually beaten by this monster. Right. Shall not be without a blue mark. Shall not be what? Shall not be without a blue mark. That's a blue mark right there. That's a blue mark right there. It says a seven that is continually beaten shall not be without a blue mark. Heartless, heartless, heartless. Wicked, wicked, wicked. Nkize, like Lolo McQuena, says Carabo sent her pictures doc. You see that? Read that part again, verse, verse 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 22, verse 10. Right. For as a servant that is continually beaten right. shall not be without a blue mark. Shall not be without a blue mark. A servant that is continually beaten shall not be without a blue mark. And that's what we're seeing with our sister here. Give me 2 Timothy 3, verse 1. Second Timothy chapter three verse one. Go ahead. This know also that in the, in the last days perilous times shall come. It says, "This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come." Per meaning dangerous times. We're gonna be living in dangerous times in these last days. He's gonna explain what he means by that. Go ahead. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. That's it right there. Men shall be lovers of their own self. Because this guy, Sandile, he was a lover of his own self. He didn't care about the sister. He didn't care about the family. He only loved himself. You understand? And the so-called forex trading trillions of rents that they claim to be making. Right? Covetous. Covetous. Boasters. Boasters. Proud. Blasphemous. Yeah. Right. Disobedient to parents. You see that thing? Thankful. That's, that's what he said. He said, Mamzo. Disobedient to parents. Mamzo. Where's my daughter? Ah, Mamzo. What the hell is this? Ray. Thankful. Unholy. Unthankful, unholy. Next verse. Come on. Without natural affection. So this guy he did not have natural affection for the sister. He had unnatural affection. That's why he was doing what he was doing. He, he did what he did to the sister. You understand? Look at the sister. You understand? Her face is dismembered because of the demon that that brother is. You understand? Read. Without natural affection. Without truth natural breakers. affection. Truth breakers, come on. False accusers. What was he doing? He says false accusers. He was making false accusations against the sister. He even went to the police for that thing. Right? False accusers in continent. In continent. In continent. Right? Fierce. Fierce. Let's get the definition of the word fierce. Hold on a second. Can you see my screen? Yes, sir. All praises. Now read the definition of fierce. Read that. The definition of fierce. Mm -hmm. Adjective. Having or displaying an intent or ferocious aggressiveness. You see that thing? Having or displaying an intense or ferocious aggressiveness. That's what that brother was. You understand? Okay, go back to the scriptures. Second Timothy 3, verse 3 again. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 3. Right. Without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despises of those that are good. They hate those that are doing good. Go ahead. Verse 4. Come on. Traitors. He says say traitors <laughs> because, hold on. Traitors, he says he owed a lot of people a lot of money. Go ahead. Heady, high-minded. He was high-minded, come on. Lovers of pleasures. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, meaning they don't care about what this Bible stands for. They will not defend it. They will not defend it to defend their nation. You understand? So is the man in Israel too. You understand? Because you've got brothers with all from all walks of life. You don't know what type of demons they're dealing with. 
So you sisters, you better take your time, follow the counsel, listen to leadership, and guess what? We'll give you the advice to protect you, okay? Because we see in the times we're living in, you sisters to stop being naive. You understand? Now watch this. Give me, give me wisdom of Solomon 12 and 10. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 12, verse 10. Wisdom of Solomon 12, verse 10. Read what you got. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 12. Read. But executing the judgment upon them by little and little, thou gavest them place of repentance, not being ignorant that they were a naughty generation. That they were what? And that their malice was bred in them. That they okay. were a naughty generation. Okay, hold on. Looks like there's some delays. Okay, read that again, verse 10. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 12, verse 10. Go ahead. But executing thy judgments upon them by little and little. Read. Thou gavest the place of repentance, not being ignorant that they were a naughty generation. You see what the Bible is saying? The Lord is saying he's executing judgments upon them little by li little and little. Thou gavest them place of repentance, not being ignorant that they were a naughty generation. The place of repentance was given is given to him because the pastor was there, but he didn't want to change his ways. You understand? He says, not being ignorant that they were a naughty generation. Remember, it says, a naughty person, a wicked man in Proverbs 6, verse 12. Read. And that their malice was bred in them. Their malice was bred in them. This goes into our enemies, but... What I'm going to show you that this also goes for our people as well, is that, that their malice was bred in them, meaning malicious intent was what? Was bred in him. You can't change him. He is the devil, the Bible speaks. That's a black ashy devil right there. Read. And that their cogitation would never be changed. Their character is not going to change. Read. Verse 11, come on. For it was a cursed seed from the beginning. A cursed seed from Neither the beginning. Neither did it now. A cursed seed from the beginning of Genesis. Go ahead. Neither did it now for fear of any man give them pardon of those things wherein they sinned. He says, the Lord says, I'm not going to give you, I'm, he's not going to give them pardon for those things wherein they sinned. That's what the Lord is saying right there. Watch this. Give me the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verse 15. Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verse 15. Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verse 15. Come on. That which is crooked cannot be made straight. And that which is wanting cannot be numbered. You see what King Solomon is saying? He says, that which is crooked cannot be made straight. Why? Because their malice was bred in them. Evil was put in his mind. You understand? So that he can die in his sin. The Lord says, I'm, gonna give, I'm not going to give him pardon for his sins. Why? Because of the evils that he is doing. Give me Ecclesiastes 9 verse 3. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 3. Go ahead. This is an evil among all things that are done under the sun. That there is one event unto all. Yea, okay. also the heart of the sons of men is full of evil. You see that part right there? And the heart of the sons of men is full, is full, is full, is full of evil. Go ahead. And madness is in their heart. Wow. And after that, they go to the dead. You see what the you see what the, the Solomon is saying? He says, and madness is in their heart while they live. Remember what they were saying. They say, No, this guy is crazy. He is crazy. That's what they said. You understand? Just look at him. He is crazy. Okay, watch this. 
give me no no let's play this video okay this is another one same guy cannot describe you in any other way than a devil in disguise. She did not deserve to perish at your hands in the way that she did. Your cold-heartedness towards the deceased is evident from your conduct after you killed her. You went on with your life as if nothing was wrong and nothing happened. The cause of a death uh, could not post-mortem be established. And it was he says the cause of her death, the post-mortem could not be established. Why? Because he destroyed the evidence. He burned her, he, he killed her, and he set her alight. You understand? The court to make such a finding. In sentencing you, the intention is not only to punish you for what you had done, but also to serve as a warning to others that this type of conduct, and I'm stressing abuse, abuse of conduct toward women, will not be tolerated in our society. As far as the interest of society is concerned, no sentence that the court will impose today will bring back the deceased to life. She is now gone forever, thanks to you. Her memory will still live on, however. Yes. By sentencing an offender, the court must make it clear to the, commu to the community that their interests are also important. And the community has a right to know that she did not die in vain. It would not be inappropriate to uh, call you a person that gives men a bad name. One looks at your actions before and, and afterwards. Uh, the court has no uh, doubt that you are a danger to society. Uh, you've shown no remorse at all. Even in evidence today, you try to avoid responsibility. You deserve nothing, nothing less than a harsh punishment. No other sentence than imprisonment would be appropriate. You caused an imbalance in the scale of justice. And that imbalance must now be corrected by imposing an appropriate sentence. So now this is the sentencing of this monster. Listen up. Take a life comes at a high price. The court has no doubt that you will now, from now on, be an outcast in the community. The court is of the opinion that the following would be an appropriate sentence. For the assault charge, you are sentenced to five years in prison. For murder, you are sentenced to 30 years in prison. For the attempt to defeat or obstruct the course of justice, you are sentenced to four years in prison. In the interest of mercy, the court orders that two years of the five years, on count one, and four years on count three run concurrently with a sentence on count two. The effective sentence is there for 32 years. So 32 years imprisonment. Oh, that's nothing. Okay. Your advocate had nothing to say in regard to section 12 1 of Act 60 of 2000. Therefore, in terms of that section 12 1 of Act 60 of 2000, the court does not order otherwise, which means that you are now automatically unfit to possess a firearm. You understand? Yes, I do. I do not have to explain the... So this is by EW you. News. Um, eyewitness News. Eyewitness News. Okay? Because he has a legal Now, what I want to show you here is, this is Times Life. So, this is Remember, we saw the sentencing, right? The first video that we saw is the family members getting involved, explaining what happened. You understand? Now I'm taking you back on what happened on the night when he killed the sister because he was caught by the cameras here. You understand? Give me that in Proverbs chapter 15. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 15. Okay, verse 3. Read that. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 3. Read. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, mm -hmm. beholding the evil and the good. You see that thing? The eyes of the Lord. These cameras, they are also part of the eyes of the Lord. You understand? Because he was oblivious completely to the cameras. I mean, this is sentient. You think there's not going to be cameras in the buildings? 
But his mind was not on that. His mind was on what was on murder. You understand? To kill the sister. Okay. So you look at the timestamp. This is Friday, 2157. Let's go back a little bit. When you look at that dustbin, right, you can see that there's nothing in it yet. You see that? The way he's dragging it, look at it. You see the way he's, you see, you can see there's nothing in the dustbin yet. So now there's something in the dustbin. Hmm. You can't make this stuff up. Eh? See, now it's 22.06. This is what, nine minutes later? Look at how he's dragging the dustbin now. Now he's heavy, even more heavier now. Look at the way, he, how he's gonna come out of the elevator. Just look at how he's, do you see that? That's a body in there. Our sister. You see, now it's 22, 25 now. You see the dustbin is empty. Yo, this guy is a demon. Like nothing going on here. You see how cool and calm and collected he is? Look at that. Oh. Natural born killers. Hmm? Now he's leaving to go and do what? To go in and burn the body and get rid of the evidence. Look at that. You see the gloves? He's cleaning up. That's what he's doing. Now this is, this is half past 12 now. So this is what? An hour and a half, close to two hours later, okay? Unbelievable. Now, so this is our sister, okay? Sandula about the whereabouts of Kahab. And he said no. He last saw her on the 27th around 4 p.m. He was calm. He was calm. He said it was character. I can't tell. Because when you look at him, the way he speaks, you can say no, this person is 
quite honest, you see. But he was full of deceit. He was full of deceit. Watch this. Give me Proverbs real quick. Okay. Give me Proverbs. Give me Proverbs chapter 29 verse 19. Proverbs 29 verse 19. Go ahead. A servant will not be corrected by words. For though he understand, he will not answer. That's what the sergeant is saying. It says he was quiet. He didn't say nothing. You understand? That's what we're reading. A servant will not be corrected by words. That's why he had to be sentenced to prison. It says, for though he understand, he will not answer. He won't say nothing. You understand? I asked him what was inside the dustbin that it was mm. looking heavy. Is where he confessed to me that no, Captain, I killed mm. my girlfriend. How? She said no. He said uh, I, I take him to the, the to the field where I burn her body. How did you burn her? He said, it was the acid, petrol, mm. tire mm. that I used to burn mm, in mm, the body. Mm. This is some evil Negroes, okay? It says he took the body, because we see him with the dustbin, acid, petrol, and tire, and she burned the body of the sister. You understand? So you really have to see the mindset, the mind that is, you see, this guy's mind, look at, look at his face. You can even tell by the face that this guy is a demon, full-blown demon. You understand? Now he's messing up with the crime scene even. He's, he's getting rid of evidence. So malice is bred in him. You understand? Evil intent is a default setting to him. Man, this is some evil stuff, okay? What was the reason to doing that? She said no, because my girlfriend, he was revealing my secret to, to, to her friends. Uh, he was calm, but he was, he, it was looking like uh, he's shivering, something is, is touching his heart. When I look at the evidence in overall, they gave me a picture. You see, this guy was a demon. Something. Look at him. When I look at the evidence in overall, they gave Okay, watch this. Is he reveling, proud, boasters? That's what we read in first in Second Timothy, right? Give me the book of First Peter, Second Peter's, okay. Give me Second Peter's chapter two. Second Peter's chapter two, verse twelve. Read that. Second Peter chapter two, verse twelve. Go ahead. But these, as natural brute beasts, mm -hmm. made to be taken and destroyed. You see what the Bible is speak saying. Speak. It says, but these as natural brute beasts. That's what we are reading in, in Ecclesiastes 3.18 in the beginning of the class. It says they are created to be taken and destroyed. Go ahead. Speak evil of the things that they understand not. Forex, right? And shall utterly perish in their own corruption. He says they are going to die in their own corruption, in their own deceit. Go ahead. Verse 13. Come on. Verse 13. And mm. shall receive the reward of unrighteousness. Judgment, come on. As they that as they that counted pleasure to riot in the daytime. He says they find pleasure in rioting. They find pleasure in rioting. That's what you are seeing here. Read. Spots they are and blemishes, mm. sporting themselves with their own deceivings 
while they feast with you. You see that they disporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. That's what we are seeing here. This guy is a monster. Go ahead. Having eyes of adultery and that cannot cease from sin. They could not stop from beguiling sin. unstable souls. He can't stop sinning, right? Beguiling unstable souls. Beguiling unstable soul. Our sister, she was an unstable soul. You understand? And he was deceiving the sister, right? That's why the sister was saying, you know, I'm, I'm, I, my body is fine, but my spirit is broken. You understand? Because she was an unstable soul at that point. Go ahead. And hearts they have, and hearts they have, exercised with covetous practices, mm -hmm. cursed children. Cursed children, cursed children, cursed children. Go ahead, verse 15. Which have forsaken the right way. They have forsaken the right and way. And are gone astray. Goes. They have forsaken the right way, which is God's commandments, and are gone astray. Go ahead. Following the way of Balaam, mm -hmm. the son of Bozo, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. Because that's what this guy was about. He loved the wages of unrighteousness. Deceiving our people, robbing them, like we read in Leviticus 25, 17. Let's keep playing. That Sandile was uh, actually an abusive man. And the court's verdict didn't mean anything to him. It was like no business as usual. I I'm failing to get the correct weight. To Look at him. He doesn't care. No care in the world. He doesn't care about what's going on. You understand? He's a trillionaire. You see that? Describe him. But at least maybe the judge uh, uh, interpreted his persona as a, a disguised uh, devil. He the is a black demon. He is. He was one. He still is. Any other way than a devil in disguise. You see that? He was laughing when the judge handed over the sentence. He was smiling. This is funny. Hmm? He, he felt like he was a, a victim instead of uh, acknowledging his wrongs instead of showing remorse towards the court to say what he did was wrong. Karabo loved Sandy because she believed that she was in a real relationship. The sister said Karabo would do anything for Sandy. She would do anything for Sandy. For me, as I looked at him in court and as I spoke with him when I cross-examined him, he is the person who does not value a woman. What I could sense from him when he was testifying, you could sense this arrogance, you know, this self-praise. Mm. Even when he was called during mitigation, you could listen to, to this face, I mean, this self-praise, how important he was, how hard he tried to change Karabo's life, to show Karabo to stand on her own and all of that. Everything was just about himself. Your boy Sandy Lemansu from Trillion Dollar Legacy. You see that? Trillion Dollar Legacy. Everything was just about him. That's what we read in 2 Timothy 3. Men shall be lovers of their own selves without natural affection. Binary king and queen maker. Ain't the king no more. I make kings and I make queens. I think he has blocked what he did, the bad thing that he did to Karabo in the manner in which he killed her because he does not want to live with that for the rest of his life. He just wants to pretend like it's not him who mm. did it. He just blocked that bad memory of what he did to Karabo. See what he's doing now? He says he's appealing both his convictions and sentence because in his mind, he don't believe he did this. He's in denial. This is the next case I want to deal with next. Now watch this. Remember what we were going over? Like, we dealt with abuse. We dealt with hatred. Now we're going to deal with murder. Give me that in 1 John 3.15 because 
this this guy Karabo, he, I mean not Karabo, but yeah, that's Sandile. He had a murderer's mindset. You understand? He was a murderer. Okay, and he hated the sister with all his guts. Okay, watch this. Give me first John three fifteen. Read that. John chapter three verse fifteen. Go ahead. Whosoever hated his brother is a murderer. And that's what we're seeing here. Read. And ye know that no murderer hath eternal life but abiding in him. You see what the Bible is saying? Whosoever hated his brother is a murderer. You understand? And you know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. You're not going to get the kingdom if you hate your brother because that makes you a murderer. Watch this. Give me Sirach 9 verse 13. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 13. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 13. Go ahead. Keep thee far from the man that has power to kill. He says, stay away from a man that has power to kill. Because this guy, he had the power to kill and he did that. He killed the sister. Go ahead. So shalt thou not doubt the fear of death. Because you're not, you're not going to always be worried about being put to death because you are staying away from the man that has power to kill. To kill you. Go ahead. And if thou come to him, make no fault, lest he take Bible away thy life presently. You see what the, the Bible is saying? If thou come unto him, make no fault. Meaning don't make him upset. You understand? That's what the Lord is telling us. He says, make no fault, lest he take away thy life presently. Meaning he kills you. Right? Remember that thou goest in the midst of snares. And the walk is upon battlements of the city. Read that part again. Remember what? Remember that thou goest in the midst of snares. Mm -hmm. And that thou walkest upon the battlements of the city. He says, you see what the Lord is saying? Remember that thou goest in the midst of snares. Because the sister, he, she was what? She was like a lamb with a wolf. That's what was going on here. He remember that thou goest in the midst of snares and that thou walkest upon the battlement of the city because that's what this brother was like. You understand? Around him. That's what the Lord is teaching us here. Exodus 20 verse 13. Read that. Exodus chapter 20 verse 13. Come on. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not murder. You understand? And that's what this brother did to our sister. Now watch this. Remember, it says, he, what we saw, he, he, the sister was in the dustbin, was in that dustbin uh, trolley. You understand? And the brother, he killed the sister. He put it in the dustbin, in that dustbin trolley. And what we saw, it says, he went and he used acid, petrol, and tire to 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 set the sister on fire after he killed him. So what was he doing? He was getting rid of the evidence. Some CSI he was doing. He was messing up with the crime scene. Watch this. Give me the book of Numbers 35 verse 1. No, no. Numbers 35 verse 16. Let's read that first. Numbers chapter 35 verse 16. Because what he, was, what he did was premeditated. It was not an accident. He planned that thing. Read that. Numbers of 35 and 16. Okay. And if he smite him with an instrument of iron, okay. so that he die, he is the murderer. Okay. The murderer shall surely be put to death. Because now this is what this is premeditated murder, what we're reading here. Go ahead. And if he smite him with the throwing with throwing a stone mm -hmm. wherewith he may die and he die he is a murderer the murderer shall surely be put to death you see the most i didn't make it vague because he says if he smite meaning if he killed him by throwing a stone wherewith he may die he says and he die he is a murderer the murderer shall surely be put to death that was the judgment you understand go ahead or if he smites him 
with an hand weapon of wood mm-hmm. wherewith he may die and he die mm-hmm. he is a murderer the murderer shall surely be put to death mm-hmm. the revenger of blood himself shall slay the murderer when he meets with him he shall slay him because the revenger of blood is the family member that is seeking justice for their loved one that was put to death okay come on but if he trust if he trust him of hatred if he and her hatred is that if he trust him of hatred meaning what because this is a premeditated murder what is the root cause of this hatred okay come on but if he thrust him of hatred or hurl at him by laying of weight that he die you see that thing premeditation by laying of weight that he die so he is waiting for him so this thing is planned in advance really or in enmity smite him with his hand that he die really he that smote him shall surely be put to death for he is a murderer the revenger of blood shall slay the murderer when he meets him that's how the lord dealt with black ashy negroes that were monsters you understand to put evil away from israel what the now you see what 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 he messed up with the crime scene right let's go to the book of deuteronomy chapter 21 okay Deuteronomy 21 verse 1 watch this Deuteronomy chapter 21 verse 1 Come on If one be found slain in the land which the Lord thy God give it thee to possess it lying in the field and it be not and it be not known who had slain him You see that thing now it says they you find a, a dead body in the field you understand so this is the crime scene but what you notice is that he wanted to get rid of that to get rid of the evidence you understand all together the lord that's what the lord is explaining here that's where the csi movies and all that they come from this chapter right here go ahead then thy elders and thy judges shall come forth and they shall measure unto the cities which are round about him that is slain you see that thing it says they shall measure unto the cities which are round about him that is slain that's why they put those lines police line do not cross that yellow strip yes that's what we're reading it it says then thy elders and thy judges shall come forth today they call them the the sergeant the in the captains and all that they come to investigate yes the detectives okay it says then shall the elders and the judges shall come forth and they shall measure unto the cities which are round about him that is slain that's the crime scene You understand they are creating a perimeter around the part, the crime scene right and it shall be that the city which is next unto the slain man even the elders of that city shall make an hypha which has been not wrought with which which has been not which had not been wrought with and which had not drawn in the yoke so now we say he says the elders of he says then the city that is next to the the crime scene that's why they will always what they go and ask the witnesses if anybody saw anything you understand so now it says even the elders of that city shall take and have that's a sacrifice which had not been wrought with and which had not been which had not drawn in the yoke meaning what has not given birth go ahead and the elders of that city shall bring down the hypha unto a rough valley which is neither eared nor sown mm-hmm. and shall strike off the hypha's neck there in the valley because now because blood was spilled so the sacrifice must be made go ahead and the priests the sons of levi shall come near for them for them the lord thy god hath chosen to minister unto him and to bless in the name of the lord and by their word shall every controversy and every stroke be tried so now they are going to do thorough investigation because now they've secured the crime scene so now this black ashy demon he wanted to get rid of the evidence and to what to make sure that when they cut the 
those that the, the CSI that come to investigate the detectives, they find the crime scene being what tempered with. That's what he was doing, obstruction of justice. That's what he was doing, and that's what he did. You understand? But the Lord made him to confess. Okay? Now, let's deal with the next one. Let's deal with the next... Um, let's deal with... Mokwena's. So, this is the brother. You know, he's a taxi driver that has been going around kidnapping women and raping and killing them. Okay? Now, let's read that. Let, let's watch this. Mokwena's reign of terror finally over. It began in September 2016. He and his accomplices drove around Gauteng in a white quantum, accosting women and violating them. Mokwena will spend the rest of his life behind the bars. Last month, the Palm Ridge High Court found the taxi driver guilty of raping eight women he had kidnapped and robbed. This morning, so rape, kidnapping, and murder. Rape, kidnapping, and murder. Premeditated murder. You understand? Going around with a quantum. So that's why sometimes I tell you, sisters, let us know when you leave that when you leave the house, when you leave your workplace. Make sure that you tell us when you arrive home. Why? Because we know we are living in perilous times. We are trying to look out for you. Okay. Rodeport Magistrates Court handed down sentencing for a similar case that occurred last year. Count one, the charge of rape. So count one is rape. Okay, that's the first count. In terms of section 51, subsection one of Act 105 of 1997, the accused sentenced to one term of life imprisonment. Count two, kidnapping. In so rape, kidnapping. Of section 51, subsection 2C of Act 105 of 1997, he sentenced to five years imprisonment. The court described Mokwena as a menace to society and ordered he undergo long-term psychotherapy. Members of the public need to be forever vigilant of persons like the accused who, without sparing a thought for the well-being of, being of others, with premeditation engage in atrocious criminal conduct for selfless, for senseless and selfish motives. So premeditation. Now watch this. Give me the book of Deuteronomy 22 verse 25 because rape, kidnapping, they're all equal to murder, especially what? Rape. Rape is murder in the sight of the Lord. You understand? Premeditated murder. Rape is premeditated murder. Watch this. Give me that in Deuteronomy 22 verse 25. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 25. Go ahead. But if a, if a man find a betrothed damsel in the field, Wait. and the man force her and lie with her, then the man only that lay with her shall die. You see what the Bible is saying? So force her and lay what it says, force her and lie with her. Then the man only that lay with her shall die. So rape is murder. You understand? That was the judgment for rape, murder, because what? Rape is equal to murder in the sight of the law. Read. But unto the damsel thou shalt do nothing. There is in the damsel no sin worthy of death. Come on. For as when a man riseth against his neighbor and slayeth him, even so is this matter. You see, the Lord is telling you, says, for as when a man rises against his neighbor and slayeth the meaning and kill his neighbor, even so is this matter. So rape is murder because this was premeditated. You understand? So he was charged with rape and kidnapping. Give me the book of Deuteronomy 24, verse 7. Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 7. Rape. If a man be found stealing any of his any of his brethren. Of the children of Israel, and maketh merchandise of him, or sell it him, then the thief shall die, mm. and thou, sh and thou shalt put away evil from among you. You see what the Lord is saying: you are stealing any of his brethren, the children of Israel. So guess what? That's kidnapping. Okay, and kidnapping is premeditated. You understand? Is planned out. 
Watch this. Give me Jeremiah 5, 26. Jeremiah 5, 26. Read. For among my people are found wicked men. Mm. They lay wait as he that setteth nears. Come on. Set a trap. They catch men. You see, that's what this guy was doing. He was going around with his friends. You understand? Kidnapping our, our, our sisters and raping them. So what did the Bible say? Read that again, verse 26. Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 26. Read. For among my people are found wicked men. Mm -hmm. They lay wait as he that sitteth near. They set a trap. They catch men. You see what the Bible says? They lay wait. So they are hunting for these women to catch them and to rape them. That's mere in the sight of the Lord. You understand? As he that set a snares, they set a trap, they catch men. So now he sent, he sent into, his, his, it was what, 18 life sentences he was given. You understand? You tell me to need this full one. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 41. Come on. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. You see that thing? They get kidnapped. So that's why it's very important to what? To make sure that we look after and we watch over our sisters. We must be good watchmen. Okay? We must protect our sons, our daughters, and our sisters as well. Okay? Watch this. Now, let's look at the next monster. Justice has finally been served for the nine women who still live with the memory of their ordeal. Hasina Gori, SABC News, Johan. Mr. Botha, you have... Here's another one. Okay. What is name? The name Luanda Botha. Here's another one. Watch this. The um, submissions made by the defense for on your behalf and the state. I am satisfied that the condition is sent. Let's look at him. Give me that in 2 Timothy 3, verse 3. Look at his face. Okay. Read that. 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 3. Read. Without natural affection. Without natural affection. Go ahead. Truth breakers. Uh -huh. False accusers. Read. Incontinent. Read. Fierce. Stop right there. What? Fierce. We read the definition of fierce earlier on. Let's go back there. Read the definition of fierce right there. The definition of fierce. Mm hmm Having or displaying an intense or ferocious aggressiveness. That's, well, that's exactly what this guy is doing. Having or displaying an intense or ferocious aggressiveness. So let's go back. Look at his face. Yes. Go ahead. Yes, sir. No, go back to Timothy. Second Timothy, chapter 2, verse 3. Without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Now let's keep playing on. Agreement is in accordance with justice, and accordingly I convict you as charged. <coughs> now, as regarded to the sentence, the court convicts you as charged, as regarding the sentence, I'll read out as follows. On the count one, which is in short rape by inserting your fingers into the vagina. You see what he did? This guy was sick. So forcing a sister and inserting your fingers into her vagina, that's called rape. You understand? It's rape. Using your fingers against her will, yeah, rape. 
because that's the first count. Okay. Read out as follows. On the count one, which is in short rape by inserting your fingers into the vagina of the deceased, life imprisonment. Life imprisonment. This is some heavy stuff right here. I need you men to pay attention here. Okay. Count two, which is rape by inserting <coughs> the accused penis into your penis into the vagina of the deceased. Life imprisonment. Listen to what listen to the sentence. Inserting his fingers into the sister's vagina, life imprisonment. Inserting the penis into the sister's vagina, life imprisonment. Okay. On count three, for the unlawful and wrongful killing, which is the murder of Oinene, life imprisonment. Oh, Oinene. Anybody know that sister? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oinene. Yes, Oinene. I think she was. She went to the to the post office. Yes, sir. This was the guy that was working for the post office, and he raped the sister. And guess what he did also. You see, there's a trend going on here. Just keep listening. Count four, five years direct imprisonment, which essentially is defeating obstruction of the administration of justice by disposing of her body, setting it alight, and cleaning up. You see the trend? Hmm. Messing up with the crime scene. Cleaning up. They're watching too many movies. You understand? They be watching Dexter. <laughs> yeah. You know that series on, on, on TV? It was long, long ago. You know, that guy he was that, yes, that guy was just killing and chopping the bodies up and putting them in black plastic bags. That's what these brothers are doing. Yes. You see that thing? So he also he did the same thing that Sanjuli did. He said he killed and set the sister on fire to get rid of the evidence. He did the same thing. The most like God has that thing written in the scripts, messing up with the crime scene. Because our forefathers, they went there to investigate the crime scene to make sure that they collect evidence so that, guess what? So the right judgment can go out. These two, they decided, no, we're not going to do that. We want to get rid of the evidence. We want to mess up with the crime scene. So that the investigators, they come, they are going to be confused and chasing their own tails. But there is a God. Understand that, okay? Uh, various forensic evidence in the course of obstructing the administration of justice. I further order, like in terms of section 280, subsection 2 of Act 51 of 1977, the sentence imposed on court count 4 shall run concurrently with the sentence imposed on count 1. I need not have to say this, it happens ex lege, but these sentences will run concurrently in that it consists of life imprisonment. That the accused is furthermore ordered in terms of section 276 capital B of the Criminal Procedure Act, 51 of 1977, <coughs> a non-parole period of 25 years is fixed during which the accused shall not be placed <coughs> on parole. Mm. And lastly, in terms of section 103 of the Fire Act, Control Act, 60 of 2000, the accused is unfit to possess a firearm. So, that's it on that. So I just wanted to show you really what's happening in the black community because nobody wants to talk about this stuff. I hope you brothers and sisters can see that. Okay. The black ashy demonic Negroes that we have, you understand? Hmm. Okay, so now let me stop the sharing. All oh, praises to the most high. All oh, praises. Can you brothers and sisters hear me? Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir. All praises to the Lord. All praises. Now, give me 
Go back to Jeremiah. Let me go back to Jeremiah real quick, okay? Go back to Jeremiah. You know what? Go back to Second Esdras, okay? Go back to Second Esdras. I think I want to touch something in there. Second Esdras chapter five. Second Esdras chapter five. Read verse two again. Second Esdras chapter five verse two. Read. But iniquity shall be increased above that which thou now, which now thou seest. Read. Or that which thou heard long ago. Or that thou hast heard long ago. So it says the iniquity will be increased in these last days. You understand? There's going to be more evil that is going to happen upon this earth. So the only thing that we have to our defense is keeping the commandments of the most High God in the faith of his son, the Christ. Our, our leader, our king. Okay, jump down to verse 8. Verse 8. There shall be a confusion also in many places. Read. And the fire shall be sent out again. And the wild beasts shall change their places. And menstruous women shall bring forth monsters. And menstruous women shall bring forth monsters. And that's the, 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 the Negroes, those black ashy demons that you saw, on those videos that I showed you. You understand? Menstruous women will bring forth monstrous kids. Monstrous evil black men. That's what you are seeing right there. And guess what? These are the ones that they, they were caught. That means there are those that have not been caught. That are roaming around in our community. They go to the same shops that we go to. You understand? They catch the same taxes that we do. You don't know them. And these are things that are not spoken of in the black community. Wherever, whether it's in the suburbs, whether it's in the cassis, they are all everywhere. Nasty uncles and all that. Yes, they exist. Okay. Now jump down to verse 17. Verse 17. Knowest thou not that Israel is committed unto thee in the land of their captivity? That's the question. He says, do you not know that the children of the nation of Israel is committed unto thee in the land of their captivity? That's the order right there. That's your job. The nation of Israel is committed unto you men in the lands of their captivity. So our job is to be watchmen. You understand? Our job is to look after the flock, to take care of our brothers and sisters and the children. You understand? To be our brother's keeper. To be the pillars of the earth. The pillars of the nation. That's our job right there. Read again verse 17. Second Ezra chapter 5 17. Go ahead. Knowest thou not that Israel is committed unto thee in the land of their captivity? Read. Up then and eat bread mm -hmm. and forsake us not. Read. As the shepherd that leaveth his flock in the hands of cruel wolves. You see that thing? The cruel wolves, first and foremost, talk about our people. It says, up then and eat bread. Meaning, wake up, get up. You understand? Put your boots on and learn this book. It says, forsake us not. Don't, don't forsake your nation as the shepherd that leaveth his flock in the hands of cruel wolves. Stay focused. Stay in the spirit. You understand? I'm going to end the class right there. Okay, let's break bread in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for laying his life down for the 12 tribes of Israel, that you too may have life. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I have received of the Lord, that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as often as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread, and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. 
For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen.